Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 163. This episode is with musician, singer, songwriter, and one of my closest friends in the world, Slim Gillian. Now, when I first started this podcast, he was someone that I always wanted on, and I can tell you right now, it was well worth the wait. In this episode, we talk about how we actually met at a gas station at 3 o'clock in the morning. We talk about him moving around a bunch growing up, learning to play music at an early age, the importance of building others up, celebrating your wins, and forgiving yourself for your failures, his upcoming tour, and so much more. I can honestly say that I am who I am today, in part due to my friendship with this incredible person. You guys are in for a treat. So, without further ado, please enjoy this episode of The Interesting Podcast, number 163, with Slim Gillian. Theme song time. see you know the facebook memories yes i do 11 years ago this week we became actual friends is that true Uh uh-huh i helped you move man that's what started it it was like either yesterday or the day before 11 years ago you were like thanks for the help in the move we're up here in lehigh now and you tagged me in it and i was like there it is man i don't miss lehigh yeah (laughs) i don't blame you i hated that house and i hated I shouldn't say I hated that city because I'm sure you have a ton of listeners from Lehigh, Florida. I don't know. I never get feedback from this thing, so I have no idea. <laughs> Aren't all of your sponsors from Lehigh? I don't have sponsors. <laughs> like mugs and jugs? I should get some mugs and jugs sponsors. <laughs> Which is a real establishment, mugs and jugs. Is it? Yeah. Is it a, what, it, what kind of establishment is it? <laughs> uh, it's, like a, it's like a Hooters kind of okay. vibe. Okay, like a Twin Peaks sort of, yes. same vein, boobs and food. Tilted Kill, yeah. Okay, those Mugs kinda, and Jugs. Mugs and Jugs. That's a pretty good name. Yeah. I'm just assuming. I never actually went in that crap Oh, bar. really? <laughs> <laughs> it might just be like a ceramic shop where you can <laughs> well, make <laughs> mugs and jugs. <laughs> I do know it's a restaurant of some sort. Okay, okay. That's a good... <laughs> what if it isn't what you just said? What a weird name to not be. I think it's a dry cleaners. Is <laughs> Why would you eat at a dry cleaners? Because <laughs> you got to get some starch. Oh, I oh, like it. That was I such like a it. dumb joke. I like it. What was worse was how proud of it I was. I know, I and I'm equally it. proud of it. No. <laughs> I'm, te- I, I'm team pun all day long. I feel terrible about myself right now. I'll, I'll make you feel a little better. I was hanging out with some people uh, last week, and someone said they were followed home by a ghost. And I was like, okay, all right, I'm listening. They said, yeah, they went to Walmart and they followed home home. And I was like, was the ghost's name Walton? <laughs> Nobody laughed. <laughs> They're like, you need to leave now. And I was like, I thought it was good. The ghost of old Sam Walton. <laughs> yeah. Discounted prices. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do voices. Um, Me neither. But just imagine I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Insert it's, funny joke here with a voice. <laughs> well, it's like, you know, you're really good at impressions. <laughs> Me? Yeah. You, I've heard you impersonate anyone anyone can come up oh, with. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Talk about another terrible joke. I, I do... Works for me. I do uh, have an Elvis Presley, which is terrible. Do you? Yeah, it goes like this. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, sorry, it doesn't go Come on, come like on. That. Get in character. I, I can't, man. It's, I can't look at you and do this because okay, it's so I'll stupid. Okay, I'll turn my I'll turn my head. I'll turn it's my head. It's so stupid. Okay. It's not even a good go one. Go ahead. I turn it's my head. It's just him saying thank you very much. Okay, it, that's it goes okay. Like this. Thank you, thank you very much. That's not bad. That's <laughs> <laughs> if I if I when I turn around, I'm like, oh, was that an Elvis impression? You'd be like, yeah. <laughs> so I think it counts. <laughs> and I, I do that, and um, I do Aaron Neville, and um, I used to do. Uh, Arsenio Hall, but I was told it was very racist. Yeah, that, so that would I make sense. So I've stopped doing it <laughs> yeah. Um, since. <laughs> yeah, probably best. Yeah, I, I, it's, racism generally isn't on brand for yeah, me. Yeah, <laughs> so that's a good thing. And it's a good thing. It's not a brand you want to associate. So in my my defense, I was very wholesome. I was sure. like, oh, this 
Oh, it is. Oh, oh. Oh, right. Ooh. Okay, my bad, my bad. But see, that's important. <laughs> Instead, you're like, be. but it, I'm going to keep doing it though, right? <laughs> <laughs> Truth be told, I actually, I just made that up. I, <laughs> I, I really don't have an Arsenio Hall impression. <laughs> I just wanted to write a joke where the punchline was, I used to do it, but people told me it was racist, so I stopped. It works. And it did, right? It works for it me. It got us where we are now. It works for me. What's worse about the whole thing is I totally skated over the fact that we just hit an anniversary of our friendship. We did. And I... I this is all I part re- of it. This I is regret it. that. We met at a gas station, so mm-hmm. it kind of... This is all on par for us. <laughs> yeah. At like, I don't know, three in the morning or Had to like have that. been. Yeah, between two and three in the morning. And I didn't know you. You you did not. But I didn't know you didn't know me. That's how arrogant I used to be and egotistical I used to be. Yep. Well, what happened was one person knew you. Right. And you are a rock star, so you knew how to like <laughs> turn it on. You're like, oh, what's up, man? You want an autograph? Except you didn't say that. No, no. <laughs> but you no. had a pin in your hand, so that was kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> and headshots. And headshots. Had eight by tens. You just pulled them out of your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> It was black and white and everything. That's man. right. That's yeah. right. You had your hand under your chin. Like it was old school. It was awesome. Because <laughs> I got I got them done at Olson Mills. That's right. I Did thought you it was Sears. That joke. No. Oh, I'm so young. Yeah. How old are I you? Mean, you're so young. Yeah, you're not well, that much I'm older young. than me. I'm young. I'm 38. I'm only eight years older. You're than 38. Me. Really? Yeah. Oh, older than I thought. How old did you think I was? 35. You've known me for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we met. You were younger than I am now. That's weird. A couple years younger than yeah. you are now. Because wait, even, I you're didn't even thirty. Know who I was? You're thirty-eight now. Yeah. And we've known each other for eleven years. So you were twenty-seven. That was the that was the age my mother was when she birthed me. Dude, twenty. You were twenty-seven. Here's what's crazier. I'm thirty-eight, and I can't imagine having a kid at twenty-seven. <laughs> Dude, tell me about it. My younger brother is about to have his second kid. Yeah, that's just like you can have that's those. just foolish. I'll just keep Kubo. I, I heard I did I heard that on um Tara's episode. You listened? I listened to your you podcast. You do not listen to my podcast. I do listen to your podcast. That's I'm one of your twenty six thousand downloads. <laughs> yeah. You're one of them? <laughs> <laughs> just that episode. I was like, Oh, I should do a quick study real yeah, quick before like, I do this cast. Let me do the most recent one real quick. I'll do five <laughs> minutes to figure out her name's Tara. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I respect anyway, it. I heard you talking about that with the, with the plant, yeah. plants of the new dogs and yes. dogs of the new kids. Oh, you actually like listen, listen. Yeah, that is not dude. at the beginning. No, I listen to your <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Admittedly, I don't always listen to every single episode. That's fair. That is true. That um, would be weird, just because that's a lot of time. Commitment. It's a lot of time, and because um, you're, that's like two hundred hours of almost, yeah. Of content. Yeah, it's a lot. And, and also, just skip the first, like, 30. Which is another thing that I was thinking about as I, I was listening to Tara's episode. Mm-hmm. Was, like, how far you've come. Because I remember those first episodes. <laughs> Me too. It's Probably more wild. than most of your listeners. Because... Yeah. You've been around. Hey, I've been there since... Yeah. I, I remember you posting... I've been asking you to come on since the <laughs> beginning. It's been five and a half years, Slim. <laughs> well... I just, I literally had nothing to say. And then when you asked the other day, I was like, you know what? I finally got something to say. And I was like, I'm busy. (laughs) And then I thought today I went, well, shit, what am I going to say? That's the amount of times I've had people be like either A, I don't know what we talk about or B, I don't think I'm interesting. I was like, that makes me want to talk to you. No, I'm crazy interesting. I agree. I'm just kidding. (laughs) I asked you for a reason, but I've been asking you for a reason. I still, I was like, well, I don't really, I don't really have anything going on. I'm, it's what Tuesday at two thirty four, and I'm sitting in my undies and same. A ro- <laughs> <laughs> That's and why I don't do podcasts in person anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I got a bathrobe on, and we're drinking hot cocoa coffee, which is really good. It is really good. It's that. Yeah. Uh, this episode sponsored by Breville and Espresso. That's right. That's not true. You don't have not any sponsorships, all. right? No, that's good. I purposely I, don't. Yeah, I, I, on my old, my old blog, which you knew. Mm-hmm. Um, I've I also was, been around. I, say what? I've also been around. <laughs> yes, you have. I thought you said I wish it was still around. I was like, me too. Because <laughs> boy, did my life go to shit after that. Um, I, am I allowed to curse? Yeah, of course. I don't mean to curse. It just kind of happens all day long. I, I, I had to cut a blooper reel of 
a crowdfunding video that, that launches oh, yeah? on Thursday. Okay. And the blooper reel is longer than <laughs> the promo video is by double. Oh no. And it's the whole thing is me cursing. Oh really? Yeah. And I played it for I played it for my wife and she was like, You you really need to stop cursing so much. <laughs> I was like, Yeah, that's true. Not on here you don't. I think Bobby holds the record for most swear oh, words. I can't even Im- I, I didn't listen to that episode. <laughs> it's I can a good only one. imagine. It's a good one. Yeah. He's a little rough. He's the best. <laughs> yeah, he's he's a little rough. And I love it. I, I I love I've only got to work with him twice. And he's like both of them with you. Yep. Uh as yep. well. And he is just he is the best dude. He is. He is a great, great guy. And he's a funny dude. Just yeah, a he is. funny man. And a talented guy. Super yeah. talented. Super wise. Super very smart. Like it's a great guy. I'm I just going to go through your whole list of guests <laughs> yeah. and tell you everything I well, love first, about them. Well, first, we met at a gas station. We have yes. to tell this story. Okay. It is on record I didn't know now. we were telling the full story. Oh, we're telling the full story. Okay. <laughs> we did meet at a gas station. Yep. Sometime between 2 and 3. 3 a.m. Mm-hmm. And the day, if I remember correctly, was... I don't that know, one I could really. tell you. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I know I was living in River Reach Apartments at the time in Naples, yep. Florida. and Behind this gas station. Behind the gas station mm-hmm. and... It was one of the brokest times of my life. I had to move my wife from our three bedroom, you know, two bad- bathroom house, two car garage, mm-hmm. you know, a nice place that was that was legitimately a nice place. And then we had to move her into this real dumpy apartment with our two dogs. And mm-hmm. it was a terrible time. I hated it. Yeah. So you're at 7 Eleven at 2 3 in the morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess I can't tell your perspective. All I know is I, I so I have a food addiction problem. Sure. Right. For for the listeners who can't see me right now, uh, it, it should be noted I am comically large. Um, somehow still upright. Yeah. Like I watched that my 600 pound life show uh-huh. and these guys can't function. And I'm like, man, I can't. I, I'm thankful I can at least move. Like, yeah. You know, I, you know, anyway, that's neither here. Still rocking there. it. And so I'm making like a late night eclair run or something. Actually, know. always. Yeah, or Why whatever not? I was getting. I, I might have been getting booze. I don't. I don't really remember. Remember, remember, remember. <laughs> yeah. One of the major food um, groups for a good time. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, and I just hear, "Is that slim?" Flawless I, impression. <laughs> that's pretty good, right? <laughs> Add that to the list. <laughs> 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 and I look up and there's these three young men and I don't know any of you guys, <laughs> but you're a hundred percent right. At that time in my life, I literally couldn't go anywhere just in my hometown. Mm-hmm. Although I do have a crazy story about, uh, Baltimore, Maryland. Interesting. We'll get um, there. In my hometown at that time, I couldn't go anywhere without somebody being like, hey, are you? you right. Know? And from whatever they know me from, are you that guy from that band? Are you Slim Tonic 5000? Are you guys from the next 40 days? Whatever mm-hmm. whatever it was back in the day that people knew me from. Uh, only in my hometown. I just want to drill, right, that, yeah. <laughs> drill that in. Like, I'm nobody outside mainly. of Southwest Florida. I, I'm going to switch to mainly your yeah, hometown. There you go. And... um. So I'm assuming, okay, these kids know me from something, and I got to be cool, you know. So right, like, oh. got to turn it on. Yeah, well, see, exactly. I had to turn it on, totally. you know. Um, you know, as an entertainer and a performer, you always have that on-stage persona and who you are in real life. Of course. And I try to marry the two so that, you know, in real life, I'm fun to be around. Mm-hmm. Um, and on stage you get a real piece of me like i've been super depressed lately sure and i played the cigar lounge the other night and i was just the whole time i was like you know what guys i just saw my psychiatrist and she said i was depressed (laughs) and i just started talking about it you know yeah and i totally bummed the crowd out but it made for a really good (laughs) night because the crowd like kind of really because it's real drew them in yeah Yeah, they they said they they really listened to the things absolutely so it was really cool but um Anyway, so yeah, I turned it on, you know, and in the back of my head, I'm trying to figure out who are these kids, where are they from, <laughs> and you happen to be wearing a hat that said Jedi Brian, 
some yeah. like easy icebreaker. I'm like, oh, Brian, what's up, man? Good to see you. You know, I'm like, oh, I'm just hoping I know this kid. <laughs> and it turns out you didn't know who no. I who I am. Um, yeah. And it was just the one kid. And and I think he knew me through my sister. I think so. Or S- through some something somewhere. Like he knew he who might you have were. Seen, he might have seen one of my bands play. I don't know. But I think... I think he was friends with my sister, and he knew me through that. Mm-hmm. But I, of course, at that time, I'm so used to everybody being sure. Oh, you're that guy, that, right? That I'm just assuming y'all think I'm that guy, and it turns out none of y'all really right. knew <laughs> who, who I was. Um, not that I was anybody. But, Disagreed. Uh, you know what's funny about that? So I I had a hat with Brian mm-hmm. on my forehead, so I was used to people calling me by my name, assuming they read my hat. So I would have strangers funny. sometimes be like, hey, Brian. I was like, oh, what's going on? And I would just walk away. I'm like, they don't know who I am. It's because my hat. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> we both. Oh, I love it. <laughs> but yeah, then it then you guys came out to some shows. Yeah. I don't know how that happened. So here's what happened. Uh, met you at what, the gas what did station. you think at the gas station when, when, when he said, is that slim? And I turned around and turned it on. What, what was going through your brain? I was like, oh, this guy's cool. Oh, come on. Yeah, 100%. Because Why was I cool buying he, eclairs at three in the morning? I didn't know what you were doing. Oh. I was also in the same place. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but when you, you see you were someone working, the, I was. Yeah, but if you see people at like three, I've been living at three in the morning for 12 sure, years now. Sure. So when you see someone who's also on the road or out and about at like three and four in the morning, you do that thing like, what are you doing out here? What am I doing out here? What are we doing out right? here? You know, so you're just like, oh, we're both just out here. Nothing good happens and at this hour. Nothing good happens after 3 a.m. Can confirm. Yeah. And so I remember, because, I mean, you turn around, you're a rock star. I've always thought this of you. Yeah. So when but you turn not, around. You should, you, you should also I feel like I know reality. you better than a lot of people still think the same thing. So oh, well, good I luck. appreciate that. I know the real you. I, th- I thank you. <laughs> and so I remember when you turned around, because my memory's horrible, so I have, like, flashes. So I remember you turned around, and I was like, oh, this guy's pretty cool, and, like, you know, you're super personable and like, oh, how's it going? And you were really nice. And I was like, all right. So I remember uh, the other guy was like, yeah, he's in a band. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. And he's like, they're playing at this place. And at the time, you're in a band called Jubilee. Uh-huh. And so I was like, I'll check them out. And like Monique was working and I don't know what Greg was doing. So I went by myself to You've edit. been with Monique that long? Yeah. We just, wow. hit, we just hit 11 years together. Crazy. In January. Crazy. Isn't that wild? Yeah, I'm coming up on 15 years with my girl. Hell yeah. Yeah, it's Dispo. wild. It's weird. We did it. We tricked him good. Oh, dude. <laughs> no kidding. I was thinking about that the other night. You know, but that's a whole I think about story. it all the time. Yeah, dude. And so I, I, went to, I went to Edison College because you guys were playing there. I was like, I'll check him out. Why not? You know, I got nothing else to do. That and was on April 1st. Yep. I got in trouble because I posted uh-huh. an <laughs> April Fool's joke that pissed my boss yeah. off real bad. <laughs> I told everybody I got fired. Yeah. And I was like, the only thing worse than getting fired is getting fired on April 1st and thinking it's a joke. (laughs) And my boss called and was like, what the hell are you telling everybody I fired you? And I was like, oh, it's just an April Fool's joke, man. My bad. (laughs) I'm getting death threats. Stop doing that. Yeah, it was bad. (laughs) Anyway, I stopped derailing you. So I did. I I went there. You know how I tell stories? I just like interrupt people and and take it some uh, totally different stem. (laughs) And then try to watch them get back to sure. where we were. Hey, this we is were. just as much fun for me because, again, ADD. I have no idea if I'm going to make it back, so we'll see. How long have we been telling the story about us uh, meeting? Three hours. Minutes? Weird. Um, so <laughs> I went to Edison College by myself. I watched you guys play. And I remember because of the acoustics of the place, like, it was loud. and It was like a real rock show. It was very loud. And so I remember being like, I've seen local bands before, but I've never felt this before. Like, just the presence alone of the band. I was like, that was awesome. But you guys, we were talking about? yeah, and you guys immediately left. And I yeah. was like, okay, cool, cool, cool. And then <laughs> you changed your name at the next show because that was the day Jubilee became Fellow Bliss at the Strawberry Fest. Yes. So I went looking for Jubilee and now it was Fellow Bliss and I couldn't find any Jubilee shows coming up. <laughs> 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 so I came home and I told Monique, I was like, I just went to the best indie concert I've ever been to. I was like, I've never even experienced this before. There's something else about it. She's like, oh, well, cool. And then I told my brother about it. And then we went to one of your shows. Uh, I don't remember what the first one was because we went to like 11 shows yeah, that summer. It and it was just lot. in. I just loved your music, loved everything about it. And then you posted that you needed help moving. Mm-hmm. And I have no idea why I thought I should 
offer help because like this guy doesn't know me at all like yeah. and it might be a weird thing They're like oh this guy that comes to my shows all the time is gonna help me move now know where i live <laughs> but i'm stupid so i didn't know any of this i didn't think about that at the time so i was like yeah i'll i'll, I'll come and help maybe it was intuition maybe maybe it was meant to be you mean we just we knew we were gonna be together forever i think so because after ever. that like i don't even know what happened because i feel like it was that and then it just flashed forward to now like, there was no, like, dating phase almost. Yeah, I think what happened was when we were going to move, you reached for a box at the same time I reached for a That's box. That's what it was. And our hands our touched. Our hands touched. We looked and we up. locked eyes. Eye yeah. contact. And I heard Philip Bliss like... music in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Hansley's intros. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. As soon as I met you, man, I just... I, Isn't like, that weird? I knew there was something cool about you at the gas station, and then when you came out to the show, I was like, well, you know... This kid legitimately likes what we do. Yeah. yeah. You guys would stay and like help tear down equipment and stuff. Like yeah. Stuff that nobody does, you know. And, yeah. and you know, I just liked you. I like the whole gang, man. Yeah. It, we, I mean, we thanked you guys in the liner notes. I know. Of One of the greatest of moments of my CD. life. Yeah, man. And because y'all, y'all meant a whole lot to us. And now on this side of life, you getting to see the real side of me that's not the you know, again, I'm sitting here in my civvies in a in a bathrobe. Same, no bathrobe, you know? <laughs> no civvies, just no a civvies. bathrobe. Listen, we gotta get comfortable. Um, you could at least tie the bathrobe. I could, um, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you're on point today, man, with your improv. Listen, you you gave me coffee, all right? This is your fault. <laughs> yeah, it's actually espresso. That's right. <laughs> because. You know, I'm fancy and refined. That's right. So I don't want people to say coffee. When it's, it's not a regular bathrobe. When it's really it's espresso. It's a nice bathrobe. It is. It actually still has the tie around it. <laughs> <laughs> it's got the security tags. Yeah. Because <laughs> people put a lot of security tags on bathrobes. As they should. <laughs> if it's like, are there expensive bathrobes? You're talking to the wrong guy. I didn't even know what French press was an hour ago. <laughs> yeah. Well, I only know because my wife knows. She, sure. She's fancy. That's right. Evens out. Which... She really isn't even that fancy. Not which isn't to say she's not fancy. Right. She's very low maintenance. That's important. That. She's very very low maintenance. <laughs> so when I say she's fancy, I don't mean like she's this fancy diva. Right. No, Laura's awesome. She is. But I don't know what it was. There's no like moment that I can point to where I was like, all right, this is the moment we became friends. It just sort of happened, and it was like it was very organic. You know what I think it might be? Now that I'm thinking about it out loud, I think we're very similar. Mm hmm. In a lot of ways, but I think most importantly, we are very open. Mm -hmm. And I think we're, we're a, I don't know if it's a rare breed, but it's the type of person who also doesn't, isn't afraid to say exactly what they're thinking in a good sense. Mm -hmm. Like we'll tell each other how we feel about each other all the time. Sure. And I feel like that's not as common as it should be. Yeah. Which is crazy to yeah. me. Yeah. It's something about that. Like that was something like Bishop taught me big time was like, never leave anything unsaid. Yeah. It's well, the only we, thing that'll help you survive. <laughs> you you walked in my door today and we hugged for 45 minutes. Yeah. You know what I Just mean? There. I think a lot of guys get, you know, because at a young age, you know, it's, you know, you, you want to fit in with the crowd. Mm -hmm. And when you're dealing with that, especially in the era I grew up in, sure. you know, I, I'm physical touch is my love language. I don't sure. mind hugging my homeboys. I'll kiss my homeboys. I don't even care. I've seen it. Yeah, I don't, I don't care. You know what I mean? I'm like, I want to express my love to you because mm -hmm. I love you. I genuinely love you. And of course, that's kind of frowned upon when you're a kid, right? Because kids don't know anything. Sure. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and you know, uh, and so I think a lot of people still deal with it today. And I know, forty year olds, fifty year olds, man. If I try to hug them, they get all weird. You know yeah. what I mean? They're like, oh, you know. I don't hug guys, you know, and I'm like, ah, come on, man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it must be that, it must be, you know, miserable being that homophobic. That, right. That like, you, you can't know, it's, hug another it's really man. nice. <laughs> yeah, like, right? That, like, it's, I, it's uh, when I was hugging you, I was like, oh, you smell nice. And yeah. <laughs> when you talked, the voice that, like, your, your, the low end of your voice was coming through your skull that was touching it's my like, skull. Mm, yeah, and it's it was just like magic. this beautiful, like, <laughs> natural reverberation in my head yeah it was it's a beautiful. moment i agree I'm like you miss these times when you can't hug your homeboys we yeah. should start a hug your ha homeboys campaign. we should hashtag hug your homeboys hug your we'll homeboys. make shirts yeah we'll figure it out yeah i'm into it yeah i like it i'm gonna I be think honest it... with you i'm probably not gonna do it yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> not, not that i don't want to <laughs> i do want to i actually and maybe i'll make that a, a merch shirt coming up here soon. there you go 
it'll be a it'll be an unspoken thing that like if you know you know yes you know it's like if you see me or slim yeah. just say hug your homeboys and we'll be like yeah yeah if yeah. if here. if people don't understand what it is i go clearly you don't listen to listen to the interesting yeah. podcast <laughs> that's twenty six thousand downloads that's right <laughs> <laughs> if that means anything, <laughs> it does, dude. That is a huge compliment. A it's compliment, pretty cool. A compliment. It's it's a it's both. Yeah, it's an accomplishment. It is an it's an accomplishment, but Look it's a that. compliment to your and we're making your, up words to yourself. Where you know it's that is the proof that your hard labor has fruit. It worked. You know what I mean. So I'll give you that. You know, it's got to be a good feeling when you see that number and go, man, this is really cool. It's pretty. It is cool. You know what the coolest thing is? The biggest thing I get out of it. One, I'm making friends, mm -hmm. which was something I didn't have growing up, but right. now, but now I do have same, them, which same. is yeah, right. Another reason we probably gravitated toward mm -hmm. each other is I want people to know these people. Yeah. You know, like I want like the most recent episode from this one would have been Danica, uh, and the one before was Tara Platt, and before that. If you know like Tara's work as a voice actor and all this other stuff, you probably don't know all this other stuff she's done that she herself has produced that she loves. I want you to know Tamari from Naruto also made What a Lark. Right. So if I can bring the passion projects of these people to a bigger light and be like, you like this person, you're going to like them even more when you get to know them as a person, yeah. not necessarily yeah. as this one role. Yeah, that on. That on, that on. People yeah, think, exactly. People think they know who... You know, like people will be like, Will Smith is so smooth. And I'm like, when have you ever met him? Right. Just because he was smooth on Men in Black doesn't that mean guy. he's smooth in real life. You know what I mean? Do you do you have a celebrity? Like, it's hard. I'm sure it's hard for you because you've also kind of tasted a little bit of it. But do you have a celebrity that's like genuinely impacted your life? Oh, yeah, man. M Mies Will Smith. Could you is not? Is it really? Yeah, it's my guy. Since I was like eight, he's been my hero. I didn't know that. Like, there's nuggets of wisdom that Will Smith has said that I live by today. Huh. Isn't that weird? Yeah, that's not weird. Like the fact that you brought it up. No, that is weird. That's yeah. strange. Yeah, Will Smith is like my guy. Interesting. I did yeah. not know that when I said that. Yeah. I was like eight years old. It was the Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards. And he won the Wannabe Award, which was the person who kids most want to be. Interesting. And I was like, all right, cool. And in his speech, he talked about uh, two things. He's like, I want to give two pieces of advice. One of them was, you are who you hang out with. Mm -hmm. He's like, so understand that if you're around That's a bunch why of people, I hang out with you. exact same. He's like, so if you're around a people who are constantly putting each other down, you're never going to get up and stuff like that. He also said, you need to take up two things. It was like reading and running. Get good at those two things. And he said, because reading, you are always learning all the time. You want to be reading all the time and learning and getting bigger. And he says, running, because there'll be a part of you that wants to stop running. But if you can beat that and keep going, you'll be capable of things you never knew that you could do. Mm. And it was all about like not giving up. Clearly, I did not listen you to know? that particular speech because you know? <laughs> I do not read nor run. I have asthma, so I was like, I'm gonna just do the first one. <laughs> <laughs> do you have your mom write a hall, like a, a a pass to the to Will Smith? She should have. It's like, I mean, he's got a book coming out later this year, so I'm like really trying to get him on the show. Oh, and then I'll be very cool for the first like five minutes. Do you know that you're one degree of separation from him? Because I I have direct contact with Will Smith. Do you? No, come on, get come out on, of here. dude, get, you can't play with this. Get the crap out Gre of here. Come Greg on. shook his hand once. What? Yeah, he came and saw the troops one time and like oh, shook cool. everyone's hand. And Greg was one of the people, and I was like, nice. Don't wash that hand till I see you. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, I don't know Will Smith. I will one day. I believe that. I just want to be like, thanks. <laughs> There's so many things he's done that I'm like, yeah, I like this. I like the way you think. Wouldn't it be funny if that was the whole podcast? You're like, yeah, here's things that you've said. <laughs> today's today's <laughs> guest is Will Smith. Yeah, here here let's yeah. get to, let's get to the episode, and then you're like, hey, Will Smith, and he's like, hey, and you just go, thanks. That's all the time we have for <laughs> exactly. now. Exactly. Or on the flip side, I'll be like, do you remember in the year 2000 at the Nickelodeon's Kids Choice Award? <laughs> <laughs> You said these things. Did you ever get the pass from my mom that says I don't have to run because I have asthma? Yeah, exactly. I got a doctor's note and everything. Like, is it cool that I didn't run? <laughs> <laughs> but I read. I yep. don't read either. I no, don't read no, either. no, no. I stopped that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, it was super influential to me. That's right. I didn't necessarily follow it. I feel like I've let it. you down. <laughs> Can I get a, can I get a you need to absolution? Know, you need to know it meant a lot to me when I, when I heard right. it. That's uh, right. So many, so many. Dude, I love Will Smith. Yeah, what are the odds? But yeah, it's like that where people see Will Smith being smooth and hitch. Yeah. And they think that's who he is, yeah. you know, in real life. Like, he's also a person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with 
totally regular problems. I think a lot of people look at celebrities and think they don't have the same problems when in reality, I would, I would argue that they have bigger problems. I agree. Um, just the loss of anonymity is the worst. I I don't ever want that. No, it sounds awful. I experienced it to a very small degree. Like I said, when I was here in Baltimore, Maryland, Yeah. I was up there for a wedding. My, my brother-in-law was getting married to his wife Mm -hmm. and, um, I was talking to somebody at the rehearsal dinner and they were like, they were fascinated with me and tell, tell, tell me, tell me about your music. Tell me about what you do. Tell me about all this stuff. And, um, you know, I, I, it was kind of annoying, you know what I mean? Sure. And they were like, well, what's the best part about, you know, do you like Maryland? I said, yeah, it's great. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. It wasn't Baltimore. We were in Chesapeake Bay. Mm-hmm. Is that a thing? Got to be right. Is that in Maryland? Sure. It is now. Whatever. We were somewhere with some water yeah. in Maryland. <laughs> and uh, uh, she was like, what's the best part about up here? And I, I said, honestly, it's the end. And it, what I was getting at was people leave me alone. And I was trying to <laughs> no. like, I was trying to Slam. say it without <laughs> saying it to her. Like, can you go talk to somebody else? Because I'm trying to just be me at this party. Sure. And... Um, and I said to her, I was like, the the best part is the anonymity because back home I can't go anywhere, sure, without people bothering me, and I'm just trying to have dinner with my wife, you know right. what I mean? And I'm just totally. I'm like, dude, I live here. I will give you my address. You can help me move. Yeah, like, <laughs> I'll do it. Uh, yeah, I'm like, <laughs> don't I, threaten me with a good time. <laughs> I we can hang out. We can go have a coffee. We we can talk about whatever you want if you give me an opportunity to plan it and like sure, be prepared for what I'm getting into. Sure, and. uh So then later that night, we go, I've never been to Maryland before, (laughs) and we go to this Target, and it's two floors, this Target, and we're walking through one of the aisles, and there's this dude at the end in a Green Lantern shirt who's like, stop dead in his tracks, just staring Laura and me and, and whoever else was with us, staring us down, and I'm like, what is this guy's problem? And so we just move on to the next aisle. Sure enough, he comes on the other aisle. He's standing in the back. And uh, so I'm like, I don't know what's up with this dude. This is like fruitcake guy is like crazy or something. Sure. And so we go a couple aisles down the way, and he shows up at the end of that aisle, too, and just staring us down. I'm like, what is this guy's problem? Yeah, like, I've seen horror movies. Right. We go to the front of the store to check out, and this guy comes up directly behind us in the little cashier station. And I'm like, this is not coincidence at this point. Like, this dude sure. is straight stalking. And you just creeping. hear a... <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, hey, man, I'm sorry to bother you. I was like, what's up? And he goes, are you Slimtronic 5000? And I was like, shut <laughs> up. I literally have never been here before. And I was just telling somebody I love being here because nobody knows who I right. am. <laughs> And it was the weirdest thing because I don't have that kind of clout at all. It sure. was just he random. He knew me from my old website and um, and blog. And, you know, he was a subscriber and a follower. And I did, his name was Kelsey was the guy's name. And mm-hmm. so we took a picture together. He asked, oh, cool. he asked for a picture and autograph sure. and all that crap. And, you know, of course, we're like, yeah, absolutely. And we told the story online. And, you know, it was, right. it was a cool encounter. But... Um, It's better than him being like, we've been trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty. (laughs) But I can't imagine, I can't imagine that on a large scale. We've been watching that Britney thing. Oh my God, yeah. Like, what do you expect? Yeah. You know, this girl was put into this as a child, you know, and, uh, you know, of of course she's got downfalls, man. Of course. She's just a regular human, you know, Uh so she's going to deal with the same emotions, Mm -hmm. but... Plus, can't go anywhere. Yeah. You know, can't do anything. Nothing. Nothing. You know. For decades. For her whole life, man, pretty much. Yeah. It's so rough. I can't. I know before, you know, we were talking about Bo Burnham. Yeah. And his ability to vocalize that and his vulnerability to be able to talk about those kind of things. Yeah. On a large scale. And not just talk about them, but use it as part of his his art and as part of his comedy and as part mm-hmm. of his act. That's that's huge. I can't imagine what these people go through. I don't want it. No, I, it'd be the I worst. Almost, I almost don't want to be on this podcast because the twenty six thousand <laughs> downloads. It's gonna I mean? tank now. 
<laughs> That's always been in the cards. <laughs> no, it makes sense. That'd be awful. I heard Ethan Hawke uh, recently. I watched a video of him, and he talked about the worst part is the isolation of fame because mm. he's like, I'll never get a first impression ever again. Yeah. I was like, that sucks. Yeah, man. Like, you just, if they know who you are, like, at a gas station, be like, oh, Slim, you, you're you all of a sudden not just looking for an eclair anymore. Yeah. Or just a beer. You're like, oh, hey, there's people now, so I got to do yeah. this thing and, like, provide this experience for them. Yeah, that'd be that'd be pretty awful. And then <laughs> they're going to help me move and, like, yeah. Just <laughs> not just help me move. I remember one time <laughs> I was so deathly ill, and you guys yeah. drove all the way up from BFE Naples. Yeah. All the way to Lehigh to drop off some gummy bears and chicken noodle soup. Yeah. And what uh, is wrong with me, dude? I think back on those things and like, w- what? That was awesome. That was yeah, one but of like, the who best. Who does never- that? A a, a a a man that loves hard. Yeah. Yeah. You know that, ma- I mean? that makes sense. You're a hard lover. That's true. I'm told. <laughs> well, you know. I read it in charged. a truck stop bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, you know, you can't choose what you're known for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's I guess that I guess that makes sense. I I'm a very all or nothing type of person. I don't know why I'm that way. I'm just uh, that's just how I'm wired. I either 100% or 0. I can't I can't do anything moderately. I just I don't think we're supposed to. I don't I either. I think when you give half of yourself to somebody that's worse than giving none of yourself. I think so. I think so. And you also, you get what you give in everything. Sure. You know, so like if you give everything, you will get everything or lose everything. That's the risk of it all. But still, that's that thing. But I I think I would would probably disagree with that and say you might lose something for a moment. Sure. But A, while you're losing one thing, you may be gaining something else like humility or something of that nature. Sure. Um, But as well, I think that in time that comes back to you i'm not necessarily talking about karma although some people could probably say that it's argue that i'm saying the same thing sure but i'm writing a song right now um called love could never go wrong it's just about it's not a love song it's not like romantic love it's talking the whole song is talking about how terrible we are as humans at loving each other yeah and we need to love each other better and agreed the purpose of doing that is because love could never go wrong a lot of people are like you know, I can't love this person because they did this, this, and this. Sure. You know, or they don't respect it. They don't appreciate my love. And I'm like, they may not right now. Sure. But that doesn't mean to stop loving that person. You got to continue loving that person because that action can never go wrong. Eventually, you know, somebody's going to understand the love that has been shown to them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's retribution. Sure. In that, you know, to be able to be like, I recognize when I was at my worst and that's in our own relationship. Sure. Y- you've seen me at my worst. Yeah. You know, some would argue I'm at my worst now, <laughs> um, you know, which is great time to do a podcast. Of with course. 26,000 downloads. <laughs> it's, I'm just going to start editing these, editing these out. <laughs> <laughs> it should be noted that that's because I'm very, very proud of you. I, I remember. It. I'm editing this out for sure. I remember. <laughs> When you posted on Facebook and said, I'm thinking about starting a podcast. Yeah. I remember you asking people about gear to buy. Uh-huh. I remember you asking about formats. Apparently, I did something with your logo that I don't even remember doing. Yep. You um, you redid it. I did find the original file, and I was slightly wrong. You didn't originate it, but you did redo it. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I was like, I don't remember. Yep. I don't remember doing this. Yeah, you did um, redo the the logo. Okay. So like I you know I I remember all of that mm-hmm. stuff you know what I mean um and to see to see how far you come and especially we talked about it bef- before we started recording mm-hmm. your your humility about it all is what's the most beautiful part of it is that is that you're not just taking all this credit and that you you give so much credit to the the guests that you have on your show of course and to the listeners of the show. And that's what makes it, that's that chemistry, man. That's that chemistry is like, I like listening to your podcast because it's real and it's raw and it's organic. Yeah. And, and, um, and it's humble, man. It's not, not even just you, like the guests as well. Like I've never heard an episode where somebody was just so full of themselves. Sure. That they're just, they want to hear their own voice. And that's the Mm -hmm. reason they did the podcast. You know what I mean? Like, 
they're people that that genuinely are interesting people yeah you know what i mean and um they have to be. So I keep I keep throwing that number up just to be goofy. Yeah. But, it, but it is something to be proud of. I'm I I am proud of you for it, because like I said, I remember when this didn't exist. Yeah, that's true. You know, that's true. Yeah, it, it's pretty wild. It, it's funny. I I have to be interested in the person because mm-hmm. it's called the interesting podcast, right. and that is just waiting to be knocked off the sure. shelf because of you're like oh well it wasn't that interesting to me and i'm like oh damn it i knew this from the beginning this would happen <laughs> so it has to be interesting but also i do i mean we've got over a decade of really close friendships so mm-hmm. i didn't need it for you but uh <laughs> i arguably i've already done it but i do a lot of research into anyone before i even ask them sure because it's like yeah there, there has to be something else that attracts me to the person like, for instance, if somebody is just an actor, nine out of ten times, I won't be interested to have them on the show. Sure. Because, like, I know your art, that's cool, but, like, what makes you different? Yeah. Like, what's something, like, if I find out that there's an actor that is well-known or not, and I just saw something that I liked, but I found out before they were an actor, they were, like, a financial banker, I want to talk to you. Because that's two sides of the brain. What made you switch to art if you're analytically minded? You know, and I want to get to know the person who makes those kinds of decisions yeah. and what road led you to where you are. Well, it's like when you show up on someone else's podcast and they go, hey, we know you from Star Wars, but we understand that <laughs> before Star Wars, you had a paper route as a grown man. Yeah. You yeah. Know, and you're like, For 12 yeah. years. Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. It's, and, uh, it's nuts. I actually, speaking of that, I'm totally going to edit this so much. Uh, <laughs> I was on a podcast, uh, called the star warriors, which is like a star Wars geek podcast thing that a friend of mine did. And they had me on and they like, they watched blisters and they watched scoundrels and they were talking about stuff like that. And I'm like, is this how I make other people feel? Cause this is wild <laughs> Yeah, that like you care enough to watch these things that mean a lot to me, Yeah, but it's just wild. Yeah. It's just wild. Why would you edit that out? Because I don't like talking about myself Talk on these shows. Talk about yourself, No, man. this is the interesting podcast with Slimtronic 5000. So I have <laughs> I have this prayer I wrote. Okay. I was just filming. I've been working with Chris Foster. Awesome. Who Love also that guy. a guest on the show. Multiple times. Multiple times. Uh-huh. And um, you introduced me to Foster, and he's become mm-hmm. one of my best friends. And uh, he and I are working on one documentary together about... Uh, kind of a spiritual journey I'm on. Hell yeah. And, but he's also working on a documentary for this tour that I'm hopefully going on towards the end of this year. Awesome. And, um, we were just talking about this prayer. We, we recorded in my pool the other day. Awesome. Um, part of the documentary, we just got in the pool and set up a camera while we were in the pool, splashing around, just talking on camera. Very Chris Foster. It was very <laughs> Chris Foster. And I don't know why I brought him up for this, but we were talking about that prayer and, uh, part of the prayer it says uh, and it, I, I use the term prayer very loosely it's, sure. a, it's a meditation it's a devotion it's totally. a prayer mantra kind of mantra it's yeah. whatever you want to call it it's what I use to kind of remind myself how I should live my life and sure. part of that prayer says uh, I must be I must always be celebrating my wins Ooh. and forgiving myself for my failures it's a good one. too often we do the flip flop. Absolutely. Where we don't celebrate our wins mm-hmm. and, and instead we, we revel in our failures and that yep. just makes it all worse. <laughs> yep. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think there's, I think there's something necessary in celebrating your wins. You don't have to take credit for the whole thing. Sure. But celebrate those wins, man. Like those cats knew who you were and respected you because of what you do. And t- that's a that's a win, dude. I'm trying. That's a big I'm win. Try- that's something I'm working on. I hear that. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, get it. that's a hard lesson I had to learn. You know, I I don't know if you ever picked up on it when you were younger, but there was up until just a couple years ago, I could not take a compliment. Yeah, I know. Who do you think taught me how to deflect? I'm a black belt in compliment deflection because of you. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. (laughs) Well, I wish I could take it all back because on this side of life, I'm like understanding like when somebody's trying to express something and I negate it, I'm not seeing them. I'm I'm actively rejecting who they are. Okay. You know what I'm saying? No, that makes total sense when you say it like that. Somebody, you know, I just got on Instagram the other day. This kid Tanner, who's been up to a couple of my local gigs, and um, he missed he missed one last weekend that he normally would be at, mm-hmm. 
and he sent me a message of my Spotify page. And he screen captured and he said, I'm making up for oh, cool. missing your missing your show the other night. That's awesome. I was like, oh, thanks, man. He was like, no, seriously, the, these these two covers and he, he he pinpointed a couple of them. He said, these these are I listen to these every day. They mean so much to me. And back in the day. I would have deflected. Sure. Much like you. I'm already, my brain's already like, all right. Exactly. All right, I got to. <laughs> but like to be able bunch. to look at him and go, dude, thank like, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you for celebrating that and and taking the moment to celebrate it in myself. Am, am I proud of those particular songs? Not at all. Okay. You know, um, but am I proud of what they accomplished in someone else's life? Mm-hmm. <laughs> How can I not celebrate that? You know, sure. what I mean? somebody took a piece of my art and said, "This means something to me," and I can't, I can't reject that. I, I got to see them sure. for, for where they are Damn. and accept that. So work on it, man. That's good. Put That's that, good. I'll give you. I'll You're write, writing the wrong. <laughs> I'll, I'll, uh, I'll write down that prayer and send it to you. Um, I, I like that. That's good. And uh, you get to that part and really, really sit on that one for a minute. Oh boy. Always be celebrating your wins and forgiving yourself for your failures. I feel like I'm pretty good at the second half of that. I'm pretty all right about it. I've gotten better at that. I'm working on that one myself. Yeah, yeah. I got to work on the first one. I'm yeah, a, they don't I'm a big time failure. Even <laughs> same. <laughs> yeah. The, the whole. But like, we all are. That's the thing. That's so kind of it. We all are failures. Yeah. And that's kind of goes back to like talking about the celebrities is we we hold them in such high regard for some reason. Sure. Yeah. But they're right. They're not they're gods. You right. Know? They're they're just normal people, and sometimes they're gonna have moments that look like failure to some people. Totally. And the choice is to either love on them mm -hmm. through this time, right, or pile on top of it and sure. make it worse. But those are the only two options. Sure. You know, the third, of course, being that part of the brain we talked about earlier, just kind of not thinking giving up almost yeah totally it's not even you know, oh man i forgot about britney spears right you know what i mean yeah like I, not to bring that that up again it's just fresh in my mind sure it's I've been a watching thing it. but that's pretty wild i you know what i realized where are you from like where were you born i was born in charleston west virginia okay i realize i've never known that because also you're very elusive <laughs> Well, I only lived there for six months <laughs> okay okay because i know you moved a bunch well, i moved a ton yeah. where did you grow up like, where did you spend the most time, I guess? I have spent more time in Florida than okay. anywhere else, but I've also lived in 10, 11 cities in Florida. Yeah? Why did you move so much? Um, yeah, so my mother my mother was a music pastor. Oh, cool. And primarily in the Methodist church. Mm -hmm. And the Methodist church tends to move people around. Oh, so, okay. So, you know, okay. basically where they're needed, uh -huh. and they go and they help build up a program, and then they go to the next okay. place and help build it up. And, that makes sense. And, um, you know, so we moved around a time. Plus, not to get into the dirty politics of church, um, I could talk on that for a long time. Yeah. But, uh, I hear you. There <laughs> seems to be... Um, a trend to say to say the word trend is not even right the right word but church politics and grossness that happens in churches embezzling adultery mm -hmm. child molestation these kind of things that sure. i'm sure you're going to edit out um it's in the news i don't have to there you go um <laughs> i feel you these things run rampant and that's why i say i can't even say it's a trend because this has been ha this is biblical yeah you yeah. know, I, 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 I don't have a religion. I don't have a faith. That's part of the documentary we're shooting is my kind of spiritual journey trying to un like, sure. The whole point of that documentary is like, I don't value life mm -hmm. because I don't have, you know, with some people I got to be good because of karma. Right. I need to get good stuff back. I need to be good because I want to get into heaven. Sure. You know, I want to be good because of this, this, and this. It's all driven by some sort of faith reason. based Right, reason. Sure. And me, so one of the things I'm talking about with my psychiatrist right now is, you know, um, I've dealt with suicidal depression sure. my whole life and su suicidal ideation my whole life. And I'm very comfortable talking about it. Yeah. Um, it's important. Which scares her. Oh, <laughs> because she's like, you're really good at talking about these kind of things. And I'm like, well, because I talk about them all the time. Sure. You know, I tried again. I, I sat in front of a, a crowd of people in this cigar bar. Right. You know, going, you know, I'm really depressed right now, guys. You know, 
kind of thinking about harming myself. Sure. You know, and I'm like, I am so happy to be vulnerable about it that I'll even do it on stage. And I learned a lot of that from Bo Burnham. Right. To just like really. Just be honest. Give myself. Yeah. Like if you want me, I'm going to give you me. Sure. You know, I'm, I, you know, I, it's another song I'm, I, it's on my new album coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's called Now That I'm Home. And the chorus it says, um, the chorus is, I don't want to be who I created. I don't want to be who they think they am, who I, who they think I am. Yeah. I don't want to be validated. I just want to be, it's love basically it. the gist of it. I love it. And, um, it's that, that moment of like not needing that validation. Like I, right. I would rather you get me yeah. than get anything else. And so. Um, going back to the biblical thing, you know, that's, that's biblical when, when, when Jesus of Galilee or Jesus of Nazareth or or however you want to call him, Mm -hmm. um, when he's talking about the Pharisees, that's what he's talking about. Yeah. He's talking about the church politics and the game of professional vocational religion. Oh yeah. Which is the craziest thing I've ever heard of. And I was Mm -hmm. in it for a long time. I worked in churches full time. Same. Um, and you know, that's the reason I don't yeah. <laughs> anymore. Um, sure. You know, and so there was a lot of that everywhere we went because I was on the back end of everything. Right. I knew all the, the nitty gritty. Sure. And of course, so did my mother. Gotcha. And so that was when there's, you know, a pastor sleeping. And, and this is not meant to bash Christianity at all. Of course. I, don't, of don't course. Hear, don't hear, this is just your experience. That. Yeah. But, you know, when, you know, the pastor gets caught sleeping with the secretary or something, my mom, she, she was like, I, I can't, right. Good I can't for her. be a part of this. Sure. You know, even though those people were being transitioned out. Right. She was still was like, I, you know, I was, I was part of that. I was here and I don't want anything to right. do with it. I want to Good distance for her. myself from it. Yeah, it was really great. Like, stick to her guns. Yeah, absolutely. She's got a, she's got a very clear set of, of morals and ethics and, um, you know, always wanted to do right by her kids and make sure that her kids were around people that weren't sure total piles. Yeah. And unfortunately, <laughs> in doing so, we were around a lot of people that were total piles. Right. Um, I kind of think if we stayed in one place, you know, the the cream would have risen to the top. You Maybe. Know what I mean, um, Maybe not. <laughs> we, we tended to everywhere we went was like, oh, my gosh, is this happening again? Like, right. I can't. I can't deal with this anymore. And that's part of why I left the church ultimately. Sure. And I, I mean, I did marketing, I did church marketing. And so it wasn't like, although at one point I was preaching, but, yeah. um, yeah. in my younger years, uh, that makes sense. Yeah. It's, it's, it's stuff's wild, man. It's Life wild. is crazy. When you think back on it, life I, is insane. That's, it, it makes no sense. Anything can happen. You can switch it all whenever you want. It's insane. That is, yeah. I didn't know your mom was like, that makes sense why your family's so musical. Yes, I come from a long line. That makes yeah. total sense. My 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 dad is a musician and sound engineer. My brother, both my sisters, my birth father, uh, my grandparents. That's like so I come, cool. I come from a long. We didn't really have a choice. You know, we sure. started. You know, my mother's my mother's the best piano player I've ever heard in my life. Really, uh, unbelievable piano player, and that makes sense. You know, she started teaching us. You know, basic music theory at you know three years old. Really? Yeah, man. It was like this is a quarter note, this is a half note, and we're clapping. You know all these rhythms, and I remember so vividly sitting on the floor, and my mom had music note flashcards. Really? And she would be like, "What is this note? How many beats does it get? How many counts does it get?" And I remember those moments now when I yeah like when I'm teaching somebody. I, you know, I go back to, okay, here's all quarter notes. Let's clap quarter notes. Yeah. Let's clap eighth notes. Let's clap sixteenth notes. That's you cool. Know, go down the line. and Makes sense. These are all straight from my mom when I was three, four years old. Wow. You know, so we, we, we didn't really have a choice. And then, of course, growing up in the church and my mother being on, um, she, she was considered one of the pioneers of music ministry in the Methodist church. Really? She was part of that whole era of, that introduced music camps and oh, cool. big cantatas with orchestras and things like that. My mom always had these big Christmas musicals with a full orchestra and, wow. and by full orchestra, I don't mean yeah, like a big totally. chill harmonic, but, but like you a know, good number of 10, 10, 15, wow. you know, cello players and French horns and like, Dude. you know, 
big big stuff and so she always needed musicians sure. so and singers you know so it was like i'm thankful for that time because the job i have today yeah i was about to say it makes sense it's completely birthed in that entertaining mm-hmm. playing music singing the technical material. building blocks alone yeah the abilities yeah i, I uh, this tour that i'm that we're looking to go on right now i was talking with foster about it the other day this is the first project i've ever done that fully encompasses everything that I do. I love it. I was it. the creative director for all the artwork for it. Mm-hmm. Um, I I made all of the press kits and and things like that. I did the actual graphic design for that. I did all of the copywriting. Mm-hmm. I did the video production. or produced it anyway. Matt Anastasi shot the awesome. videos. But I did all the editing um, and shot some of the stuff for it as well. Mm-hmm. I wrote the songs. You know, I'm playing sure. and singing the songs. It's, it's my you. sound system doing audio. I love you it. You know, this is, you know, logistics of planning a tour. I've yeah. done it all. This is the first thing in my life that encompasses every single thing that I do as an artist. Um, all in one, I all love in one that. shot. And it's and it, these are all skills that I picked up being wow. in the church. Did you yeah. guys get to pick your instruments or did your mom assign you instruments? No, we, we, we picked them. Um, cool. I mean, we started with piano, obviously. Um, I didn't take to that very well mm-hmm. and went on to play saxophone. That's my first instrument. Oh, really? That's my first, like, real instrument that sure. I can, like, That's play. cool. Yeah. Um, I played that all through middle school, all through high school. Wow. Um, and, you know, I played drums for a bit. I played a couple other instruments. I played tuba. I played trombone um, in the pet bands. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until I got a guitar that music made a whole lot of sense to me. Gotcha. That's when it clicked. And I've been, which is weird because I consider myself more of a bass player than a guitar player. Okay. Okay. I love playing bass and that's what I wanted to play. Okay. So I want to play bass. And I begged my parents, uh, what seemed like years, <laughs> I don't know how long it actually was, but it seemed like forever and ever. I wanted specifically an Ibanez Iceman bass. Cool. Which is like Gene Simmons bass. Uh-huh. Um, not not his custom made axe one, but like his regular bass. You know, it's this Ibanez Iceman, and I wanted it so bad. I want this Iceman five string bass. Oh, five string. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. dude. It was Doing sick. it up. It may have been a four string. I don't know. Sure. But <laughs> either way, it was totally sick and stupid. Really dumb guitar. Yeah. And, um,. <laughs> And shout out Ibanez, sponsors of the that's show. That's right. That's right. Um, I'm just kidding. There's no sponsors. <laughs> there went that. <laughs> um, there was yeah, going to be. It was going to be a sponsorship <laughs> until I ruined it. That's right. Um, I did end up playing in Ibanez for a while. I, okay, will say, okay. I will say that. And they do make great guitars, but that guitar is stupid. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I begged my parents for an Ibanez Iceman for so long. And my mom came in like February or March after Christmas. And she's like, I got a surprise for you. And I was like, what is it? I hate surprises. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, what is it? And she's like, something you've wanted for a really long time. Oh, no. And I was like, oh, word? Like, I, I know. I, I, I'm a guy that doesn't have a lot of wants. Sure. We were talking about it <laughs> at, at that show that I keep referencing where I was telling him about being all depressed. Um, oh, noise and bad right. noises. <laughs> um, I stood up and now I feel like I'm dying. Um, <laughs> just kind of stretch my legs. We've That's been okay. Here for so long. And um, she's like, it's something you've been wanting for a long time. Oh, and I was saying it at the, at that gig, I asked the crowd. Yeah. If you had three wishes, what would you wish for? Now, who does that in the middle of a show? Let me just, 5, 000, let that's me just stop and go, hey, man, what, <laughs> what would your wishes be? Number one, more wishes. <laughs> yeah, and, and that was my only caveat is there's no – you're limited to just three wishes. You All can't. right, number two, more genies. <laughs> <laughs> and I told them, I said, I know what my first two wishes would be. Mm-hmm. I can't for the life of me figure out a third wish sure. to this day. That's okay. one of the things that plagues me is I only have one more option for a wish. Right. What's it going to be? And I, I don't know. Like I'm not a guy who wants a like lot. Like a Mountain Dew, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a Coke. Yeah, I'll have a Coke. <laughs> um, and uh, bad joke. Great movie. Bad yep. joke. Great movie. Yep. Um, <laughs> and, you know, so I'm sitting here in, in my head and I'm like, I don't really want anything. And I. Sure. 
there can only be one thing that I've really wanted. Mm-hmm. But I knew there's no way they're right, yeah. this bass guitar. <laughs> and she was like, well, it's made of wood and it's got strings on it. And I started losing my mind because oh, no. I'm like, my parents got me an Ibanez basement. I don't basement. like this story anymore. I, I was like, or an Iceman. I was like, this is so great. I, I'm so excited. And she pulls out this cheap Samic acoustic six string guitar. Oh boy. And I was like, for real? <laughs> like, I don't want this. Like, I don't want an acoustic. I want to play in a rock band. You know, I want this flashy, you know, sure. You know, rock star looking guitar. bass. Yeah, yeah, man. And she was like, you know, well, learn to play on this. Because if you can play guitar, you can mechanically play bass. Right. And um, learn on here. And then, you know, if you stick to it, we'll get you a bass. Later, I found out it's because uh, uh, a girl, that she, a lady that she knew had bought a couple guitars for her kids uh, okay. for Christmas. <laughs> sure. And they didn't touch them. Perfect. And so she was just trying to get rid of her guitars. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and so my mom made a low ball offer and sure. was like, well, will you take this? <laughs> yeah. And um, I'm glad she did, though, because guitar was the first instrument where I could see music. Right. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Like, That's when it really clicked for you. Yeah. And, you know, and I, 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 you know, my mom accused me of sleeping with a guitar and taking a shower with a guitar. And I pretty much did. I mean, I always, even now, you know, before you came over, I was just working on some new music. I was, you know, playing my guitar. There's not, other than the four years I was in Colorado, I play guitar all day, every day. I love it. You know, it. it's, it's just, it's what I do. And of course I consider myself a bass player. That's so um, funny. Still to this day. I never get work on I bass. I know you as a guitar player. Yeah. Oh, uh, people only do because I never get work yeah. on bass. Other than recording, <laughs> like studio and session work, I get bass work. But other sure. than like stage time, I never get to play bass. Except for Sheena Brooke. I was playing right. bass with her for a little while. And um, that was awesome. Like, talk about fulfilling dreams. Right. Like, playing bass with a real rock star. Yeah. And uh, That's so cool. But I, I'm grateful they did because, you know, it's it launched. Everything. An ability with music that translates, man. Because I remember being in jazz band mm-hmm. in high school. And I played baritone sax. And we got to this one song that has a Barry Sachs improv solo in it. Sweet. So there's nothing written. No, it's just a black bar. Yeah. Yep. It's like, I've it been just there. says Barry Sachs solo. And my band director, Sam Hayward, love that man. I don't, I don't think he's still around, but he was one of the most influential band directors I ever had. Cool. And, um, I remember him just being like, Oh, just cut loose and play. Yeah. And it didn't make sense to me. Sure. I was like, but there's nothing to play. Right. There's no music on the page. What do you mean? (laughs) Yeah. And he's like, just make it up. Yeah. How do you just make up music? Sure. Like, how do you think the music got there in the first place? Yeah. (laughs) Somebody made it up. And I just, I I didn't have the the ability to do it. I couldn't improv at all. I couldn't. Sure. Didn't even register in my head. I've been there. Guitar, especially when you're playing a lot of lead work. Yeah. Which I I hate that word, but yeah, that's, (laughs) that's a whole nother podcast. Um, you you have to be able to improv and and you learn very quickly as you're running scales mm-hmm. how to improv and so now anytime i pull my sax out you know i can rip improv on it i'm like man i wish i could have done that when i was a kid yeah it just didn't make sense to me totally back then mm-hmm. the way that it does now and i i only got that because of that's that, so that cool stupid i've i've been in that exact position. i did so i played trombone for seven years mm-hmm. and then i did jazz band for three it was either two or three and yeah, there are sections when it's like improv things. I'm like, what? What do you mean? Yeah. Oh, and I pretty much had to like, okay, what key are we in? I have these scales, and any one of these notes will sound okay. Yeah. I'm just gonna start playing notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's how everyone starts is just by, you know, I know like when I when I I don't teach a lot. I don't I don't do a lot. I don't take on a, like students. Mm-hmm. Um, when I say I teach, you know, constantly people are coming up do you teach guitar? Right. And I go, no, I don't. But if you want to come to my house and jam for an hour, yeah, come. Sure. And I'll play some licks. And if you want to know how to play that lick, mm-hmm. I'll stop and teach you how to play that lick. But I'm mm-hmm. not, I don't have the patience to, to, sure. to really teach people, um, which sounds so It's snotty. not for everyone. Not everyone's a teacher. That's what my mother, my mother, 
unbelievable piano teacher, always had students. Um, when she left working for the church, she, she went to work, um, as a private school band director. Cool. Great at teaching, teaching, great at teaching students. (laughs) Um, she teached taught. Yeah. Yeah. You can edit this. This is, (laughs) is this live? Yeah. Um, (laughs) She's got the ability to do that. She has the patience to do that. I, I, I she got not, a lot of practice with you guys. She did. You know. I do not have that gene um, because because we started music at such a young age. Music is a, it's a language. Absolutely, hundred percent a language. Absolutely, and um, it's a mathematical language. Yep. And you know, you either know the language or you don't. Yeah. You can it's. You can know words of it, mm-hmm. you know what mm-hmm. I mean, but you can learn to play music, but you can't technically learn to improv music because that comes from inside. Yeah, you have comes... to have the mathematical base to understand what notes fit in the yes, key. Yes, but everything else is inward yes. coming outward. So because I have known the language since I'm a little kid, right? It gets tough when I'm dealing with a 50 year old man, and I'm like, dude, <laughs> there's only eight possible <laughs> notes, man. Like, sure. But all of them, you teach them like a pentatonic scale, which only has five notes. The pentatonic scale, yeah. penta, it's yeah. a five-note <laughs> scale. And I'm like, man, there's only five notes, you know, and trying to teach people how to be creative with five notes. Some people just aren't creative. It's, But they can. It's just you don't know how creative you can be until you have the resources and the tools. Totally. And the tools for music – it's not like carpentry, right? Which is not to say that carpentry is not an art. It absolutely is. Totally. Um, but like, you can buy tools mm-hmm. to do specific jobs for you. You can't buy the skill. A, the skill. <laughs> the practice. Yeah. The only. The only thing you got to learn the scale, which is the tool, and then you just got to put the tool to use. Yeah. You know what I mean? And eventually, you know, you can cut dovetails, you know, or whatever. Sure. You know, um, whatever the thing is. You know, I think everybody has the ability to express themselves. Mm-hmm. It just takes a commitment to to gaining those tools, and the only way to gain those tools in music is to practice. Sure, put in the work. So, yeah. So people come up to me now, and they're like, "Man, you're so good at this." And I am. Part of it's <laughs> the deflection where sure. I, where I don't want to I don't want to take credit for it. Sure. Because I'm like, it's not that. It's not that I'm naturally good. Right. I've been doing this professionally since 1998. Sure. I can't do that math in my head, but that's 20 it's a long time. years, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I'm like, it only sounds like I'm good because I've been playing guitar for 20, right. 20 however odd years. That makes so, total sense. Like and, you put in the work and that's what they're seeing. You're like, this yeah. is not an innate ability that I mm-hmm. just have. I earned this. Yeah. And I'm, I'm way better today than I was even just a year ago. Sure. You know what I mean? So I'm like, what you're hearing today is the culmination of yes. just years of commitment. So it's not that I'm good. It's just that I'm very experienced yeah, in it. Totally. I feel the same way about acting. Like, I think about that a lot. Like, I, I feel like I'm a pretty good actor mm-hmm. now. Like, especially a fantastic at, actor. Like, after blisters and everything, I'm like, yeah, I, yeah. Can, I can walk into a room and hold my own. I'm yeah, you're pretty a great much actor. Good. But I, that's because I've been doing it for seven years, and I've been pushing myself and yeah. flying to Colorado and be like, let's see what I'm made of. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm, yeah. which is wild. <laughs> yeah. But that, I guess with any sort of craft, that's kind of how it is. It's all how much are you putting into it. Yep. How long have you been practicing and stuff. Yep. So it makes... It makes total sense that you've been playing for that long because I will say it, you're the best guitar player I've ever seen. <laughs> and I've seen you perform and I've heard it. And like, there's that magic that you have, that improv where you just can go. It's you. Bishop was the best drum player I've ever seen. Yeah. And then, you know, it's like all of these people that have been doing it for that long. Well, yeah, that's why they're that good. Yeah. This is culmination of experience. Yeah. This yeah. isn't just, oh, I'm just going to do my thing and figure yeah. it out. Some people and, can. And there, I was going to say, there is raw talent. Yeah, there are absolutely. people who just are prodigies. Those absolutely. people absolutely exist. Unfortunately, I ain't one of them. No. <laughs> I had to work really, really, really hard to get to where I'm at, which is nowhere. Right. Um, Same. There are, there are people that just have it and, yeah. and bless them. Yeah. Um, those people tend to be big inspirations for me, and I learn a lot from those totally. people, too. I consume a lot of other people's art. Um, you know, I, I, you know, the expression that all art is borrowed, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yep. And, and I, I love it when somebody goes, man, you sound like, yeah. And they insert one of my sure f- 
favorite people. And I'm like, oh, thank you. Good. Like, you know. Yeah. Um, I mean, look, there's only 98 keys on a piano or something like that. Like, I don't know how many keys there are. But however many keys, there's that many notes a piano can play. 88 keys. 88 keys. So there's 88 keys on a piano. That's what you have. Yeah. So from like the greats like Beethoven to like a guy who's just learning, you have the same tools and resources. Right. So there's that sort of thing as well. It's kind of, I don't know, art's kind of crazy, especially when you have the same tool. Like one guitar in the hands of 20 different people. Oh, yeah. You have X amount of notes that you can play, yeah. but that's where the expression of the artist comes out with the music. I watch a lot of these videos on YouTube where a musician will create a backing track. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. And then people submit them playing oh, that's those backing cool. tracks, and he kind of critiques them and... and uh, a lot of times, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, pick, you know, a top three or something like that. That's cool. But I watch them not for the competition side. I, I don't believe in, I'm not against turning your art into a competition. It's just not for me. Sure. I've only done two band battles in my whole life and mm -hmm. I felt gross about both of yeah. them. I won both of them. <laughs> right. or my bands did anyway. Sure. And, um, and you know, I've, I've still have always been like, oh, I hate that I did that, but it did help my career. Sure. Um, I I don't like turning my personal art into a competition, mm -hmm. so I don't I don't watch it for the competition side. But it's I watch just to to look at twenty different people and get an understanding of who they are. Yeah. By their approach. Sure. To the same exact backing track. What decisions they're making. Right. So same with acting. Yeah. So that's yeah, a, absolutely. So like that's an interesting thing that you did there. Like, oh, wow, to just, the way you put that cup down, mm -hmm. interesting choice. Interesting choice. Yeah, how you hold the cigarette. It's like, very yeah. interesting. Okay, I never, I would not have, you did this instead of this. That's weird. Yeah. Huh. It's just, it's art. Yeah. It's expression. That person does what they do. Yeah. And you get a piece of them from it. Yeah. Do you remember the first time you ever, like, played on stage? And, like, got that, oh, this is what I want to do? Mm, yes, I do. Yeah? I was in one of my mom's worship bands. Cool. And we were, there was a conference that was going on in Spartanburg, South Carolina. And they played at whatever the little arena there is where the, mm -hmm. where the college team plays basketball and such. You know, about the size of... Hertz Arena, sure, a little, a little smaller. I'm, okay. I think, um, few few thousand seats though. Right and on. It's good size. Yeah, yeah. Not a small room. No, it's not big. a small room. It's by an any arena. Stretch. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's a small arena. Yeah, and um, so my mom's worship team was this featured. We we did all the worship for this conference. Cool. And on the, my mom had me perform a saxophone solo. Uh, of the t of the song "How Great Thou Art," perfect, and it was her on piano and me on alto sax, just the two of us. Oh, cool! On this stage, in front of thousands of people. Sure. And I put my balls into that song. Sure. I played like I'd never played before, and just uproarious standing ovation oh, um, that happened cool. after. And a lot of it was because I was a kid, you know. I was but like still, fifteen years old, you know. Yeah. I was just a kid, it's and the this same was heart, the first though. time I experienced large-scale appreciation of what I do. Totally, that wasn't inside of the walls that I was used to. Sure, you know when 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 you're a pastor's kid, mm -hmm. you know you when you come into that church, you're you're a part of this family, and they all kind of treat you like their own kid. Right. And so it's like, of course you're proud of me. Of course you like what I yeah. do. Yeah. But this is thousands of other people who yeah. never heard of me before, you know. And to get, you know, validation from them and to be to be respected in that manner, right? You know, was like this is what I'm. S yeah. Now, it should be should be clear. <laughs> I've never wanted my job. Okay. And I still don't. Okay. Um, I hate being on stage. <laughs> I have the worst stage fright. Even local gigs, I have a hard time with it. My poor wife is like, why are you freaking out? It's some dive bar that you've played at a million times. But it's still people looking at just it you. It is, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, you, you don't understand. It's, it's me st standing in front of people with all of them staring at me 
and it's my job to entertain them and and give them some semblance of realness and 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 some sort of yeah it's stressful into my life it's mad because it's real because you're not putting on a show that's not you you're real Mm -hmm. and uh so in that moment it wasn't oh, this is what I want to do. Mm-hmm. In that moment, it was, this is what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. And I fought it for a while, man. I, you know, I was here in Florida and I went crazy and I ran away to Colorado for four years. Mm-hmm. And for four years, I didn't even sing in the shower. Like, Damn. I didn't pick up a guitar. That breaks my heart. I didn't do it. It broke my heart too. I didn't realize it at the time. Yeah. It almost killed me. Yeah. And, um, cause I was just actively rejecting who I was and what I was supposed to do. Yeah. And, um, it literally, literally almost killed me. I was, I don't know where I was going with this. <laughs> Getting on stage when you realized this is what you wanted to do. Oh, so I was watching, uh, uh, Jeff Garland, you know, Jeff Garland. Uh-huh. So I was watching his most recent stand up special that came out a couple of years ago. And in it, he, he talks about some parenting device, uh, advice that he gave his sons. Hmm. And he's like, do what you're good at. Don't chase your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so anti what you're told as a kid. Yeah. You can do anything. You can mm-hmm. achieve anything as long as you put your mind to it. Sure. And you can be whoever or whatever you want to be. And mm-hmm. he was like, I reject that. <laughs> you know, he's like, it's way better to be a successful accountant than you know, a starving artist, you know, because sure. you're trying to chase this dream. And I, I realized like, man, I'm fortunate that what I'm good at and what I'm supposed to do happens to be other people's dreams. Sure. You know, which is not to say that people don't have dreams to be some high level accountant. I'm sure that, sure. I'm sure that absolutely everybody who loves accounting and is meant to do accounting, mm-hmm. they want a big, you know, a big multi-million dollar budget to work with and, and all this stuff. I'm sure they want, I'm sure for some people that's their dream. Totally. But it was one of the best piece of advice that I had ever heard was, because at the time I was trying to be a, a video producer, a film producer. I remember. <laughs> um, specifically a DP. Yep. And, uh, and to a lesser extent, a director. And that's part of what I drew, what I moved to Colorado to do. And... I'm just not good at it. You well, know what I mean? I, well, you're not as good as maybe have, you wanted to be. I have moments, but I, yeah. I I recognize that it may not be your biggest strength. Right. Yeah. And I recognize that, which was great lessons learned because it it reminded me I'm a better producer than I am director and DP. Sure. And that still took me some lessons to learn. I, the first time the we first shot blisters. blisters. <laughs> yeah. First blisters now wasn't entirely my fault. No, that was um, my, that was a majority my fault. No, I'll no. Take, it was, it I'll was, take credit for that one. It was a team effort of yeah. suckness. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> it's a multi-level failure. We failed as a team. <laughs> yeah, we did. And um, <laughs> But again, that's like what I was talking about earlier. Yeah. You can't look at it as something you lost. You know, it's something sure. I gained from that is, you know what? I'm really good at putting the pieces together. Yeah. And I should focus on that aspect of it. And um, same with music and entertainment. As much as I ran away from it, I was like, this is what I'm supposed to do, and this is what I'm good at. And so I need to go back to, you know, I couldn't get a gig in Colorado to save my life. That's part of why I stopped playing. Sure. And I was like, I don't understand how I can go back home and be like, I'm home. And everybody's like, can you play? Can you play? Can you play? Yeah. And then I go to this other place, and everybody's like, no, we don't want you. You Right. It's a weird thing. Very strange. And, um, but I learned through that, like, you know, it's better to do what it is that you're good at and do the other thing as a hobby. Mm-hmm. So I still shoot stuff every now and again. But sure. The majority of like my client work, mm-hmm. I almost never shoot any of it. Really? I hire out, uh, Christian piles and sure. Chris Foster and all these other cats. Um, we built our just, team <laughs> who are just better than me. Sure. And that's their thing. And then I become a better shooter from it, but that stuff's just more of a hobby now. Right. And I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And that, you know, there's so much sanity. Yeah. There is something special about that. Like the, I don't know. I, I believe so. Like Bishop told me one time that like, if there's something burning in your heart, it's there for a reason. Mm -hmm. And like, I have this message that he sent me and I like printed it out and it's on my desk. 
because I'm that guy, you know. Nothing wrong with that. And so, it, you know, I just need the reminder sometimes. And so one of the things that I've always thought about is like if you have a dream or something like that that's been there the entire time and it doesn't go away, there's a reason for it. Because when you are a kid, you know, you want to be a cowboy, you want to be an astronaut, you want to be a cop, it keeps going, it changes every yeah. few years. Because, you know, you're just kind of playing the field. Well, yeah, yeah. It's but knowledge. Exactly. Ac- acquisition of knowledge. Exactly. But if there's something that you're like, oh, I've always wanted to be this. It's almost like I find if you put in the work and you don't give up, that will absolutely happen because it's it's that seed's there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like it's an it's an interesting thing to think about because when you have that thing and you know what that thing is, there's nothing like it. Yeah. Like you can try to do other things, but you're not gonna get that fulfillment sure. that you'll get from playing music for you. Sure. You know, or like acting for me. It's like when I'm on set, everything else goes away. Yeah. It's this weird tunnel vision I get of like, all oh, right. This just feels right. Yeah, it's the same. Like a spiritual stage, yeah. alignment, almost. Yeah, it's wild. And I think part of the issue is from childhood, people are led to believe that their profession is who they are. Yes. And the older I've got, gotten, the older I get it. Both the older of them. I've become. There we go. There you go. I'll I'll the take all of them. The older that I've become, the more aged. Yep. Um, the more years added to the odometer. See, I wish I could do voices, man. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Um, I can't either. They're all. They're not good. No, you shut your <laughs> face hole. Um, Actually, that was pretty good. I practiced that, that one a lot. That was great. That was really good. My old man. It is. I um. I could think of some ways we could make some money off of yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Billy. Billy. <laughs> Hello. Go. Um. I'm gonna take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> gonna get naked. Take yeah. a shower. Anyway. Um. The older that I've become, the more I realize that who we are is more personality based. Absolutely. Well, I think who we are is pure light and love. I think it's a decision. Of, yeah. Part of oneness yes. with everything else in the world. I agree. I think everything is the same thing, you know, yep. um, which gets me in trouble a lot because I'll be like, you're no better than a cockroach. Yeah. <laughs> that's not what I'm saying, but that's how it comes across. <laughs> sure. And I'm like, no, no, no. What I'm saying is that cockroach and you are made of the same material. So don't step on it. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? You're the same thing. You just <laughs> so don't kill it. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, and they're like, no, I'm better than it. I'm going to kill it. And I'm like, but no, no, you don't need to kill it. It's a living thing. Like, it's, sure. It's okay, man. Just love it and let yeah, it go. Yeah, what's he doing? <laughs> yeah, so it comes across as you're no better than a cockroach. But right. that's not what I mean. No, no, no. All. We're all stardust. Um, you know, come on. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, you know, very and very few professions are that way where that profession embodies somebody's morals and ethics. Yeah. Y- you pretty much only find that... In the legal system, really. Sure. I'm a lawman. Yeah, true. I'm a policeman. That's what I was born to do. Right. Is police this is police people. My, this is my personality. Right. And yeah. <laughs> there, there's few, you know, doctors kind of one, you know, where sure. you know, I'm, I'm going to save lives and help people. Right. You know what I mean? If you're like, you know, a sanitation worker, you know, I doubt you were like, man, I'm going to pick up garbage for a living. That's right. You know, which is... Not to say you can't find joy in it, and it is very important. It is but huge. It's, not it a is. lot of people pair it to their personality. Right. And right. that's super dangerous, I find as well, like to pair it with your personality. I agree. Then that's why a lot of people in the military have a hard time coming out. Yeah, man. It's like, no, you're more than the job. I promise yeah, you, you're still a person, and when you get out, fighters are the same way. They're like, well, if I'm not doing this, what am I going to do? Yeah. You know, Ronda Rousey talked about when she lost the second time, she thought about killing herself because she's like, what else am I? Like, yeah. You're still a person. You're not... Yeah. You're not just this thing. You're not just a fighter. Yeah, you're man. a human being. So I think that's very important for people to separate themselves from what they do. Because yeah. you're yeah. still, even if you're not doing that thing, you're still you. Yeah, man. You know, it's nuts. It, well, even the same thing, like, you know, music and art is hand in hand with my profession and right. my personality. Totally. I'm very blessed and very fortunate that I've been able to take what I do as artistic expression and mm-hmm. make money from it. Totally. It's hard to do. Very. Um, and it's even harder to do it in the sweet spot where I am mm-hmm. because you go too far and you're Britney Spears. Yep. You know what I mean? Which again, not to harp on Britney, but I mean, this little, I mean, it I, is important this, to talk about. This doc is crazy, man. Yeah. And you know, my heart breaks for the girl, you know, Ditto. And, and not just her. I look at all, you know, like the Olsen twins, man. Yeah. And like, how messed up their lives got because of 
you know, all of this yeah. that surrounded them. You, you go too far and that's what you get. Mm-hmm. You don't go far enough and you're broke. Right. You know, I'm in the sweet spot of making a, a, a decent living mm-hmm. while having anonymity. Sure. You know, you've scaled appropriately. Yes. Yeah. yeah it's, I'm in the <laughs> sweet spot of people leave me alone now. Yeah. And I have enough money in the bank to pay my rent. Perfect. You know what I mean? And you find joy in it. And I do. I, I which miss is joy in it. Which I didn't important. before. Sure. I didn't, but my whole life, I didn't find joy until the last two years, moving back to Florida. And it was the same with when I moved back. Mm-hmm. I never looked at Southwest Florida as home. I lived in San Carlos Park. I lived in Naples. I lived in Lehigh. I lived in Fort Myers. And I lived in Bonita Springs, which is pretty much which is all, all of them. South, <laughs> yeah. Southwest Florida. And Southwest Florida was never, ever home to me. And... I moved to Colorado, and the whole time I was out there, something felt weird. There's just something really strange about life, and I didn't know what it was mm-hmm. until I was moving back. And I had been back before, but I was back for work every time I came. Right. And it was always it, temporary. Yeah, it went, mm-hmm. and it was like, I'm in for three days. I'm booked all three days. So I, you know, I came back more times than people even realize, but I couldn't ever tell anybody. I remember because secret texts. You're like, I'm going to be at this place. Don't tell anyone. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, All right. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's like, you know, I, there's a lot of people wanting, wanting my time and attention, but my sister lived here mm-hmm. and you know, I was like, if you know, my brother yep. lived here before he passed and you know, I was like, I, I don't, I want to spend time with these people. Right. Know? So I had to be very, very selective with totally, um, who I told I was, you know, I was in town. Mm-hmm. And so even all the times that I came back, it's still like I would get over the bridge and I would be like, oh, God, I hate this place so much. I'm <laughs> so ready to go back to Colorado. Right. Until I was moving back. And I moved back a couple of weeks before Laura did. Mm-hmm. And um, I just remember driving over that bridge and seeing the water and it just being washed over with emotion. I started crying mm-hmm. and I was and it felt like home for the first time. Really? And when I started playing again, this is my first foray into a solo career. I've always True. been a part of ensembles. I've always been a part of bands and, mm-hmm. you know, at the very least a trio. You sure. know what I mean? I, I never really even did a duo act before. Um, save for a couple times with my brother when we were kids. Right. Uh, the, this, this whole solo career thing is so brand new to me, but it feels so much like home. I'm writing more music than I've ever written in my life. Cool. You know, that, that I've just never been able to do. And now here I am a- able to do it. And I think it's just because I'm in the, where I'm supposed to be now. Yeah. And I spent so long fighting, you know, the battle of, what I want to do or what I think I want to do versus what I'm supposed to do. And it wasn't until I yielded to that. that sure. Pieces started falling together and other things have got way worse. Of course. <laughs> That's how it goes. <laughs> but you know, That's a law of equivalent exchange. <laughs> perspective is, you know, of course, you know, what you're focused on is, your focus you're determines your reality. Yeah, man. If got a if, tattoo to my arm. <laughs> if you look for the good stuff, you're gonna find the good stuff. If you look uh-huh. for the bad stuff, you're gonna find the bad stuff. So yep. if you don't want the bad stuff, look for the good stuff. Always. Know? Always. What do you think that was? Like when you came back, like that feeling of home. Was it being away from it for so long or was it just like accepting, all right, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing? I think it was just that yield. Yeah. That yield of like you know, I have the network that I have down here is unbelievable. Well, yeah. Unreal. It's, again, cultivated over years and years and years. Decades. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, almost two decades. Um, I cultivated the network down in Southwest Florida and I took it for granted and I didn't realize, I didn't realize how good I always had it growing up in towns with like growing up in the the church where I always had access to other musicians. Right. And then I cut my teeth as a, as a performer and an entertainer in Columbia, South Carolina, playing bars I wasn't even old enough to be in. Sure. Much less on the stage playing and drinking, nonetheless. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, and so I had, you know, playing there in South Carolina, I was surrounded by other talented musicians. Always had somebody to play with. Always had a place to play. I went from there to the Orlando area, mm-hmm. which is teeming with music yeah and 
worked in a music store nonetheless. So I knew all Perfect. the musicians in town. Sure. You know, I played in a couple bands and I was just always surrounded by it. And then I moved down here. Same thing. The first thing I did when I moved down here is I started a band with Cubby and right. and my brother and his brothers. Um, not my brother's brother. Town Fool. Yes. Cubby's brother. Um, you know, and I, I had that band and, and I just always had a group one to the next i was you know it's a lot like girlfriends sure i've never been single you know what i mean <laughs> yeah, like sure. uh i would never i've never not had my network and i didn't realize how much i relied on that network mm -hmm. until i moved away and i didn't have it anymore and i wasn't doing what i was supposed to be doing what i was born to be doing i wasn't around the people that lift me up and mm -hmm. help drive and propel me you know, I was so actively far away from it that I was miserable. And I, I, I didn't, I, I just thought it was all my job that was making me miserable. Gotcha. And it was just my whole life in general was just a black hole. Right. And coming back over the bridge in Fort Myers, headed down to, I stayed in Naples for a couple of weeks before we moved in to our house here in Benita. Mm -hmm. And Going over the bridge, it was just knowing I am where I am supposed to be. I'm where I'm the most loved. I am where I have the best support system and the strongest network. And I'm about to be doing what I do best. Sure. And what fills me with joy, as scary as it is, and as much as I hate to do it. Of course. Um, and so that that was just a magical moment, man, of, of all that culminating and knowing you know, I, I am leaving behind a place where I wasn't supposed to be, which is not to say I didn't learn valuable lessons of course. while I was there. That's how it works. I absolutely did. I learned a lot of great lessons while I was there. And I'm very grateful for my time there. And sure. I miss it. I still miss it every day. It's a beautiful place. It, I love it. I love it. Um, but it was just like knowing that the next portion of my life was going to be doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Sure. Uh, with the people I, you know, I'm supposed to be doing it with mm -hmm. and for and to was you know it just finally felt like home you know it was like yeah. it was like being embraced just like getting hugged in this warm bosom yeah you know, of like welcome back and uh and of course you know being able to come back and like let people know hey i'm here right yeah you know and actually <laughs> hang out with people was nice too because then i got to see all my friends again mm -hmm. and i was like man i haven't seen you in four years right which is crazy like to not see people i saw you a couple times i was here yeah um you're one of the we made sure it was like a group yeah. of 10 and half of those you were related to <laughs> yeah yeah I ten, ten's even a generous yeah. number i think um yeah but to be able to connect with all those people again mm -hmm. it was just like there's so much warmth there that yeah. That I didn't even know, know was missing. I'm yeah. glad you're back. I'm glad to be back. And it's the first time I've loved Southwest Florida. Yeah. <laughs> I've <laughs> always hated it. Context. You have to get I away from it to appreciate it. Always hated it. Yep. And now, now I'm like, I'm like the king of the locals, man. You are. I'm all like, <laughs> oh yeah, I don't like going to this place because all the tourists are there, yeah. you know. And and you know, I find myself talking about Yankees all the time, yeah. like all oh, those Yanks, you know. <laughs> and they're like, well, wait a minute, right? And like, no, you don't get it. I'm from here. That's right. You know what I mean? I claim this place. I've been here the longest. Southwest Florida. You know, we moved here when I was, uh, it was 2002. Okay. Something like that. Okay. And uh, so coming up on 20 years, Oof. save for the four years I was missing. Right. Missing in action. That's um, right. You're on your journey. You know, so I'm like, well, I've been here for 20 years. Like, Yeah. Your heart I, was always here. I remember when Coconut Point was nothing but cows. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm at that stage where, I, like, the OGs would be like, well, I remember when this was nothing but. That's right. And I find myself saying the same thing. I'm like, man. Remember when Gulf Coast was nothing but cows? I remember. <laughs> I remember when all of this area was nothing but cows. You know what I mean? And uh, cows and and f fish and fishing related sure establishments. That was all it was was bait shops and cows. I always and, judge people as far as how long they've been there by mentioning Bayshore and what that means to you. <laughs> I feel that. I respect that. And the old school are like, you mean Kelly Road? And I'm like, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Bay Bayshore, and there's one of two reactions. Oh yeah, and Bayshore, like downtown. That's nice. I go, okay. So you're new. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, I'm like, I, I, I'm not into politics at all. I don't follow them. I, it's probably terrible. I don't believe in 
politics the way they are currently. Sure. I believe in the idea of a government. Sure. The concept of a government. It's yeah, it makes sense. Ideally. Not a fan of this particular one. Understandable. Not not not, not even this administration. I, I it's yeah. the whole thing uh-huh. is very broken. I agree. And um I you know, I want nothing to do with it. But I I found myself in the shower the other day going, you know what? When I'm like 50, I might run for mayor. You uh, should. Oh, dude. The I, first pink haired mayor. The first <laughs> pink haired mayor. Um, a, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to live to 50. And B, you better. I, I would like to say I'm going to try my best, but the last. Listen, I didn't say you'd win. There you go. There you go. <laughs> but you oh, should. Yeah, yeah. You should absolutely yeah. run. How I funny mean, would that be? Uh, well, think about like the pool, right? You're very well known in this network that you've cultivated for 20 years. Most people in your network would vote for you, probably, which means that's a lot of people. You never know. Here is mayoral candidate Slimtronic 5000. Yeah. The real problem is after you win, you will regret it (laughs) immediately. (laughs) Oh, dude. No, I would sabotage it somehow, I'm sure. I mean, as you should. (laughs) Yeah, I don't. But I was saying you'd be like, all right, here's my idea. And there's four people behind you. Be like, "Uh, that's a no. That's no. (laughs) <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and pass. Yeah, Thank right. You. Yeah, I have big ideas. I go cool, 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 cool. Term limits are very short now, just so you know. <laughs> it would be. Uh, I, I I wonder how I would would I run as Slimtronic Five Thousand. I hope so. No, no, no. Slimtronic Five K. You got to be professional about it. <laughs> but also current. Mister Five K. Mister Five K. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I so that was a very quick thought in the shower. I was like, you know, I could run for mayor. And then I thought, I have done so much awful stuff. Oh, yeah. For which I should have been canceled many times over. Right. And I still, <laughs> almost every day I wake up going, man, is today my day? Is today the day? Yeah. Is your it, number up? It is, you know, and I'm like waiting for it to happen. <laughs> I mean, yeah. the good news is a lot of that was before social media and cameras and everything. Y- yes. So that's good. Yes. You had a grace period. Yes. So they, they're they only catching the back half. I, on the internet, I'm pretty squeaky clean. I yeah, look pretty good smart. on the internet. Smart man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, uh, and the statute of limitations haven't reached the other thing, so we're, <laughs> we're pretty all right. I sign NDAs. I, I understand how this works. <laughs> I, just, I can't imagine how much ammunition somebody would have to be like, you don't want this guy as your mayor because check this out. Right. And, like, just <laughs> and they have like list. actual printed out documents. Yeah. It's not online, but it's physical yeah, copies. Yeah, man. I'm like, <laughs> oh, crap. And I then I like have to ex- explain why it makes me a good mayor. You right. Know? It's like, well, I relate to you then. Because that's another thing. We like to act like politicians aren't normal people either. Very true. You know, and I'm like... Well, that's another thing with you specifically. I feel like somebody could bring up these like physical documents, be like, "Did you say this?" And you would just say yes, even if it wasn't you. You'd be like, "Probably, probably." Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> I had somebody <laughs> accuse me of something a while back, and I was like, "You know what? I can't even say no." Right? Yeah. <laughs> I can't say I didn't do it because that sounds like something I would do. Yep. Uh, yeah. Like, where I was just like, I, I don't know if I did or did not do that. I can neither confirm nor deny. Right. What I can tell you is I don't remember it. Sure. And so uh, for the sake of conversation, we'll assume I did it, in which case I apologize profusely. <laughs> um, and so I don't even know if I did what I was being accused of. Sure. It wasn't anything yeah, major. Regardless but. of what it is, I disagree with it, even if it was me that said it at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Bishop always wanted to be a politician, though. He could be very good at it. He um, he's very he speaks well. Yeah, and he followed all that stuff. He had he had such an opinion on all of it. And, yeah, and uh, he's also I, way I too smart. Way too smart. Way. Crazy, crazy. Yeah, too much. Playing Jeopardy with him sucked. I bet. I oh, bet playing anything with him. So Monopoly, you're like, why am I in jail again? He goes, <laughs> because I know the guy who runs it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He's playing like real court rules in Monopoly. <laughs> <laughs> I got subpoenas. That's right. I built a house on Go. Um, you can do that if you own this amount of property. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, living in that kid's shadow kind of sucked. But, I bet. But I bet. it's also the greatest thing because, you know, he's such a monumental guy. Not So to, are you. Not to fully shift gears, but, you know, uh, the fact that people relate me to him. Yeah. You know, I'm like, that's, that's high praise because... He's the best dude I ever knew. So same, 
So anytime somebody's like, you're so much like your brother, I'm like, well, thank you. You're right. <laughs> thank you <laughs> very much. That is the highest compliment ever. Yeah. yeah. I, I do a little curtsy. and Of course, you have to. That's yeah. part of it. We, we all agreed yeah. that that's how it works. I'll take it. I'll take it all day. I, I've been finding myself like catching myself in a mirror. Yeah. I'm like, man, you look just like your brother. Yeah. You know, the older. It's nice. The older. Yeah, right? It's, I like it. <laughs> if I could just drop a couple LBs. Yeah. <laughs> that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Not going to do it on this coffee, I'll tell you that That's much. right. Same. This coffee that's was good. all chocolate milk. You guys are two sides of the same coin for me. Yeah. Actually, I sent you a picture. I have a frame of the picture that somebody did of Bishop. Mm -hmm. They're like, uh, the Dia de los Muertos. Yeah. And then your painting of the Love Bears All. Mm -hmm. I have yep, prints yep, of yep, both right. in a frame in my room on my wall. Yeah. It's yeah, nice. It's awesome. It's nice. I like it a lot. That blesses my heart. Mine too. Mine too. I get to see it every day and I'm like, Aww. yeah, I know those guys. Aww. I love those guys. I, uh, and that artist is so very talented artist, Savannah McNamara. There you go. Um, did that art piece and she allows me to sell it on my website. And, you know, I said, how much, you know, do you want from each sale? And she was like, keep it. That's keep cool. It, use it, use it to, to spread love. And I'm like, you get it. I love it. You get it. That's right. So Samesies. I'm, I'm blessed that she allows me to even sell that because it's a, um, it's obviously a, a very important piece of art to my family, mm -hmm. but it was a very important piece of art to Bishop and to Savannah both. Sure. She credits that to, she credits Bishop as being the person who like really pushed her over the edge to become a full-time artist. That's what he did. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah. Absolutely. And so as a thank you, she did that. That's portrait cool. Home. And so she did that while he was still alive, you know what sure. I mean? And um, the fact that he died, you know, relatively shortly after that, mm -hmm. you know, was just like, what a cool thing to have. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, and, and not just to have, something to have, but something he got to see and experience. That's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, man. I thought that was an after thing. Yeah, because a lot of times, you know, we don't get to see, you don't get to go to your own funeral. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, sure. you don't get to see the impact that you have on people's lives mm -hmm. while you're able to appreciate it. Sure. And and he was able to do that with Savannah, at least. And I'm sure he felt that, I'm sure he felt the same way everybody he came in contact yeah. with. Yeah. I mean, everybody's got the same story. Isn't I'm that like, crazy? Yep, yep, that sounds like him. Yeah. Yep. Everybody's uh -huh. got an identical story yep. um, of their interactions with him. Something you both do very well is like unabashed love on people and like building people up and making them think you can be more than you can. Like I, as an actor, I wouldn't be anywhere near where I'm at now if it weren't for you. Oh, come on. Dude, we went to, I flew to Colorado. Edit this out. Edit this I'm out. keeping this because no, when I, I'm going to deflect, I flew to Colorado. You don't get to cause we're working on this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to see it in real time. I flew to Colorado with a really dumb idea uh -huh. of proving Which whether... I didn't think was a dumb idea. Here's the thing. At I, the time. You remember we talked about it, and I was like, I'm going to come to you in Colorado, and when I come back, I'll know if I'm a good actor or not. Mm -hmm. I want to push as much as we can. I want to see... I want to really test my limits. And you yeah. were like, all right, let's do it. Yeah. You shot everything. You edited everything. We wrote together. Like, that's a lot of work you did for somebody else. Sure. To, like... I don't even know why you did it. I just asked I and you said yes. I love you, man. Yeah, but I don't know. It's it's weird. But it worked because I came back and we were able to, you know, make something, you know. And I, so, so when I came back, I remember coming back from the trip being like, all right, yeah, no, I can do this. Yeah. For sure. Because I nobody ever pushes themselves entirely, I find. Yeah. A lot of people, they're afraid to. Or like, they'll get the stage fright, but they won't get on stage. Yeah. And I was like, I've been doing this for three, four years, five years at the time probably. And I was like, okay. I should have something to show for it because if I can't do these things, I'm either behind or I just don't have it. Yeah. So the fact that you were willing to go on that journey with me and really push me and like, we're actually going to find out, I'm not going to hold your hand through this, like, and hold back. We're together going to find out what you're made of. Yeah. It's just not a lot of people do that. No. And I thought it was a brilliant idea. And it worked. It you worked. Know, uh, it mo worked. Most of it was unusable. Yeah. <laughs> but the stuff that the stuff that was good that came out of it was really good. Yeah. And um, you know, I, I think stretched us both. You know, in, definitely in a lot of ways. And of course, like I said, I learned a whole lot, of, a whole a whole bunch of lessons from it. The biggest of which was that I wasn't passionate enough. Right. For my for that art mm -hmm. to be better at it. Sure. Um, and that's okay. Exactly. You know, and uh, 
Like we did it. We, we, we're there. Like it's special. That's the celebrating the win and yeah. forgiving yourself for your yeah. failures. So I could kick myself for the, for the, for the downsides of, of that. But the good stuff was well, pretty damn Bro, good. You remember going to that Irish bar? Uh-huh. On the mountainside. Yeah. Uh-huh. I remember that. I remember you asking me, you're like, all right. So, cause we started that Saturday. You were like, can you cry on command? I was like, I don't know. I've never tried. <laughs> and they were like, we're going to find out. <laughs> and, and you asked me, where do I go? You're like, how do you do it? What's your process? And because I was dumb at the time, don't do method acting. Yeah. It's not good. I don't care what anyone says. It's not safe. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's not, don't do it. You want to learn the skill. Daniel Day-Lewis is the only person who can pull it off. That's it. The only one. It is not healthy. Don't do it. You figure out a way to turn it on and turn it off, more importantly. Yeah. And I, I told you, and you're like, oh, well, we're not doing this sober. And I was like, probably best. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Went, had a few drinks, came back, made me cry a whole bunch. But the problem was I couldn't stop crying. I still tell that story. Because the, they're like, have you ever cried on camera? I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. A lot now because I figured it out how, yeah. to, how to do it technically. But at the time, I just for real did just it. Just went to a dark just place. Just went to a really dark yeah. place. And then when we got done, we just held each other and cried for 20 yeah. minutes. And at, like, this is stupid. <laughs> three, four in the morning yeah. <laughs> at my brother-in-law's house where everybody's sound asleep. And yep. we're trying to be quiet setting up camera equipment yep. and yep. setting up props. and uh, Uh-huh. And we went for it. Half drunk. Yep. Uh, it looked good, though. It, it looked. It was the best thing we shot, <laughs> yeah. for sure. By far. Remember when, when that guy got arrested? Uh-huh. After taking your lighter? Just, just, that, just that trip to the bar alone yeah. could be its own podcast. It, it could. Of, like, wild things that happened in the yeah. only, like, two hours we yeah. were there. Yeah. <laughs> It's wild, but I, yeah. but I love that because you're, you unabashedly love people and you're willing to go to those lengths to show it. And I think that's really special. It's very cool. I have never thought about it like that. I was just, yeah. I was. Because you just do your thing. Blessed that you would even be interested in, in doing it or that, that you even asked me. Um, of course. That, Who else that, would ask? Well, <laughs> well, I don't Somebody else, you should have. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, maybe. But we, we both grew from it. You know, I think so. There's a lot of lessons that came from it, and we're both better people. Yep. We made blisters twice. First we time, did. terrible. Again, we learned because I was doing way too many things that I wasn't focused on just the acting. Yeah. I just put people in chairs. Yeah. And then look at this first to second, yeah, night and day. And I think, too, like, do people reshoot stuff for movies all, all the time? The time. <laughs> yeah. And that's like that was a hard lesson, is that we see what the finished product looks like, mm -hmm. and we assume that it went off without a hitch. Right. But every film is over budget. Mm -hmm. Every film is past deadline. Yeah. Just in talking with Chris Foster, you know, we're going on this tour in October. Hopefully, mm -hmm. we got to raise a bunch of funds through sponsorship and crowdfunding. And if we don't get those funds, we can't go. But sure. It's certainly not at the capacity that we're trying to go. Mm -hmm. But uh. uh so I'm looking at going on this tour, and he's like, ah, oh, man, I'm supposed to be shooting this movie for large TV network uh -huh. insert here. Of course. And uh, I think you know who I'm talking about. Uh -huh. And uh, so I'm like, oh, well, when are you supposed to be gone for that? And he's like, the whole month of October. <laughs> <laughs> but we're touring from October 14th to November 7th. Uh -huh. So I'm like. That's like How's two that weeks of work? the tour. That's I half of it. Yeah, I don't yeah. know how you... It's it's two-thirds of it. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. It, it's a three-week run, and he's supposed to be filming a, a, a TV movie for Insert Large TV Network here, Uh huh. Um, who also sponsor this show. Yep, of um, course. And Large TV Network TM. <laughs> <laughs> TM. <laughs> um, and he was like, oh, yeah, don't worry about it. That, that, that film's not going to happen in October. <laughs> I was like, but you have a contract for it. Yeah. He's like, oh, no, it, it always gets pushed back by insert large TV network here. That's so wild. Because they always get pushed back. Where I, he's like, I can guarantee that we're not going to film that till next. Even though he's got a signed contract. Sure. He's like, we're not going to film that till next year. Like, he's like, I can, I, I can pretty much guarantee it. You just, you, just con you just consider me on board, and we're going to act like I'm going. And if something happens, then... Cross that bridge when you get to yeah, it. Yeah, but he's like, no, nah, we're not. That that film's not going to happen. So it just goes back again. Just because you see a finished product, don't assume that that is 
that that was put together easily. Right. You know, it's it's a lot of a lot of tears, man. A lot. A lot of fears, a lot of tears, a lot of pain, a lot of heartbreak, heartache, struggle, conflict. Yeah. Like, you know, all of those things. When you when you listen to the Fellow Bliss CD, you don't see the times we almost got in fist fights on the sure. you know, on the van writing these music writing these songs. Yeah. Um you know, I think people you know, it goes back again. People hold celebrities and, and people of clout with so much regard because they think that their life is easy and everything just comes natural. And right. They totally look past. Are you good with process? Like, do you give yourself permission to fail these days? And it's like, oh, you know, I'm learning. Bro, celebrate your wins and forgive yeah. yourself for your failures. <laughs> yeah, that's... Because there's never been a time that I failed that I didn't grow from it. Sure. So I am on this side of life. I am very happy to forgive myself for the failure again, man. Uh, yeah. A bunch of that stuff we shot up in Colorado was just garbage. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? And some of it was stuff you delivered real well, mm -hmm. you know, but the actual footage itself was garbage or the audio was garbage or the directing was garbage, whatever, yeah. whatever. It was. And some of it, the acting was garbage. <laughs> well, <laughs> I remember some of those. I'm like, ooh, that was not my best. <laughs> Considering we did it all in two days. Yeah. Like, the fact that know. we did all the shooting in one day. Yeah. Ten scenes, at, ten locations. Yeah, I was going to say at so many locations. Yeah. Um, We're done. While I was drinking the whole day. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. On top of it, because I'm, you know, I was really struggling with. Sure. Uh, substance abuse issues, but I am, I am working very hard on it. Hell yeah. Um, it has been, I haven't had a drink since St. Patrick's Day. Hell yeah. And I haven't had a cigarette in five months, although I've been dipping lately. So sure. So it doesn't. It's it half, one, of, one, it's still negates. toe in the water, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's, That's you okay. Know, I, I, I've just been struggling lately. What are you saying? Give yourself a break, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, there's there's never been a moment where I failed that I didn't learn from it and didn't grow from it. And sure. so on this side, I, I, I totally embrace the failure. Because it means the next thing that I do is going to be so much better. Right. To the extent of, you know, blisters, what the what finally became of blisters, I didn't do anything technically on it. Right. Um, you know, I, I, other than providing some equipment, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But I was able to help get the right people in the right places. Right. And now we got something. And the music. Oh, yeah. I never wrote the music for it. Yeah. So yeah. But um, I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, Very important. <laughs> yeah. So I guess I did have a hand in it. Um. But now, what it's an award-winning short film. Yeah, yeah. isn't you that know wild? What I mean? It is it, when you get all the right people doing the right jobs. And like, that that came, it's award-winning, and that came from everybody failing the first time. Yeah, absolutely. You know, something really good still came from it. Sure. Better, way, way better, better, way better, way better than I could have done. So f same. Forget if, if we had the right director in and we had the the microphone plugged in and yeah. You know, if everything went Absolutely. off without a hitch, it still wouldn't have been as good. Totally agree. what we came out. Yeah, we I mean, there were even with, tiny with rewrites and like the ending line, which is the whole heart of the piece, like wasn't in the original. Yeah. So like, you're absolutely right. Yeah. I find I find it's just, I struggle with that sometimes, giving myself permission to fail because, in hindsight, absolutely every failure I've ever had I've learned from. Yeah. But in the process, it's like I don't know. I don't know what that is. It's it's tough to have that kind of foresight beforehand. Sure. You know what I mean? Because the hindsight, you're always like, yeah, it totally worked out. Everything is better now. When you fail, yeah. you don't actually fail. You learn. Yeah. But to have that clarity as you're doing it, and that's, it takes some bravery, I guess, to an extent. That's one of the biggest lessons I've learned from Chris Foster. Yeah? He's because so good at that. he does just not care. At all. Like He's like, I know this is not going to be good, Yeah. Then, but uh, I'm going to put it out anyway. Yeah, isn't that and weird? And he does it. And I'm like, how do you do this? I feel the same way. We just talked about this when I had lunch with him. I was like, what do you... He's like, you know, I don't care about their opinions. I was like, then why are you doing it? <laughs> like, yeah. With art, if you like making something that nobody sees, would you still make it? I was like, probably not for me because I'm like, I want people to enjoy it. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, I still would myself. Like, well, music and everything is so expressive, but like, yeah. I don't know. It's like a weird thing. It's, it's a weird art audience relationship thing. I don't know what that is. N no, but I, I'm I'm glad that I have learned that lesson because I look at this album I just wrote. I go I I go to record it starting on July 11th. 
Cool. I spent a whole week at Juniper Studios in Cape Coral, Florida. Hell yeah. Um, recording that album to release on October 14th, which is the first day of the tour. Awesome. Uh, or tour, depending on who you are and where yeah. you're from. Um, <laughs> tur. The tur. <laughs> Tur's um, banking. And I, I mean, I've been talking about doing a solo record or, as long yeah. as I can remember. Yeah. And I just couldn't write anything because it had to be good. You right. Know? It's like, I got to have an album that's all thriller and no filler. You know sure. what I mean? Like, it's got to be bangers top to bottom. Because you look at, like, the the big players in the music game, these pop kids, you know, and, you know, Justin Bieber. Yeah. You know, he puts out an album and it's bangers top to yeah. bottom. Taylor <laughs> yeah. Swift, it's bangers top to bottom. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of it, they're not writing. Maybe, I mean, save for maybe Taylor Swift. Sure. Um, and cats like her, mm -hmm. but like, I, I was like, man, I can't write bangers. And it wasn't until I let go of that and just went, you know what? I'm just going to write from the heart. And if people gravitate towards it, cool, but I'm just going to do it. I'm going to write it and record it and put it out. How? And that, like, that like how do you, how do you come Chris to Foster's that? That's influence, man. Yeah. He, that is he has like, it's like a fine line and I love him. It's one of my closest friends as well. He like he has that fine line of like reckless abandon yeah. and just ridiculous confidence. Yes. But like it, it, confidence knowing that it may not yeah, be good. It, it's like you know what it is? He sticks to what he whatever he decides, he sticks to it. Which is so admirable because I'm like, how? Yeah. You know it's not gonna work. He goes, I'm gonna do it anyway. Yeah. What? Well, <laughs> like I, I don't know whatever became of empty, but it was like that. Right. I remember when he was pitching me the idea because he wanted me to, to do some producing on it. And I, I was out of town when you guys were doing it. Mm -hmm. um, so I just couldn't for that particular project. But, you know, he's explaining to me what it is. And he's like, I'm just going to turn a camera on. Oh, and for Brothers. Brothers. Is yeah, that yeah, yeah. That's the one that's he's like, we're going to improv a movie. I was like, no, we're not. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Brothers, brothers, brothers. Empty was the one empty? you were there. That's the gas station one where we met Christian. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Also yeah, really good. Like he just I've never seen that one. It's I mean, he never finished it. But oh, the stuff oh. that I saw made it in my reel because it was good. <laughs> is what's is that ever gonna get done? Good question. How is the audio for that? Do we have good audio? I think audio? the audio was good. I think there was um I did the audio for yeah, that one. No, the audio was good because the audio is in my reel and stuff like that. Okay. I think there was oh, just yeah. a um I don't know how to say it correctly there wasn't the same say less yeah i got you yeah yeah, yeah. i got you yeah i understand but yeah given so the like, circumstances absolutely yes i got you yeah the everybody listening is like what are they talking about yeah we now? can't really we know something you don't know that's I'm right i'm staring at the recorder as if i'm there yeah. real people <laughs> sitting there yeah you, it's uh yeah so it did it, it across the board it wasn't enough to release okay because that makes sense things. That makes sense um, but yeah, but yeah, brothers, brothers is the one. Yeah. So I did, I did help produce and I did the audio for empty. But, yeah. Um, brothers was the one that, that foster called me to, to help produce and I just couldn't cause I was out of town. Sure. But yeah, when he's like, Oh, we're just going to turn on a camera and whatever happens happens and I'm going to edit it into a movie. And I was like, what, what are you talking about? This is That's the dumbest I shit I ever heard in my life. That's what I said. <laughs> but he was like, no, just going to do it anyway. No big deal. Yep. You know, and I'm, I'm just like... I had to reel him in a little bit on that. Oh, man. I, <laughs> I was like, I need to know where I'm going. That's how improv works. Oh, yeah, works. I'm sure you had to reel him in for that. Because <laughs> I was the guy he was just going to point the camera at, <laughs> tell a heavy story. I was like, Chris, I can improv. I'm confident in my skills to be able to improv whatever you need. Yeah. But I need to know where I'm going. Yeah, I need to know a motivation here. <laughs> yeah, I need to know at least where's the ending point. Yeah. Be like, yeah. you go into this room and then get too mad and then leave. Okay, cool. I can totally... Just go through that. But I need to know where I'm ending emotionally. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just going to be nonsense. Yeah. Uh, so, like, learning that from him and then with Sheena, I had this conversation about writing a solo record, and she helped me write a couple of the songs. Mm -hmm. We co-wrote one of the songs together, and then she refined another one of the songs for me. Cool. And, um, you know, I was talking with her when, when I first started talking about it, you know. Just, you know, she's like, what is your hesitation? I was like, it's just not going to be good. Yeah. You know, and she's like, just put it out. Just like, put it out. What is that? I don't know. You she, know? She's the same as Chris Foster where she's like, I don't care. I watch her play her live shows, man. It's such a trip. Cause, or not live shows, but like gigs. Yeah. 
because in the music world you have just like acting sure you have gigs and you have jobs like yep. shows jobs you know sure a gig is doing a, a commercial you know where right. a show is a, a recurring like a production on a series or sure doing a production or something like that like a real what we actually do right you know uh you have gigs which is playing the local bars sure playing a lot of covers you know, guitar and microphone just playing right. a tiny crowd and then occasionally you have shows and your gigs basically you, you show in the music world you, you know you don't make money off the shows anymore but you make them off the gigs and the gigs provide the opportunity for the shows got it but i'll go catch her gigs you know where she's playing three hours a bunch of covers and stuff and people will request songs when I get gigs, when I'm playing, I play five nights a week currently. Right. Play a lot, five to seven nights a week. And so I'm always playing a gig, and people are so accustomed to be able to just walk up to whoever's playing in that environment and be like, can you play, you know, insert. Sure. Three ter- bird. Terrible song here. <laughs> and, uh, you know, a lot of them, I'm like, it's either I don't know it mm-hmm. or I know it and I'm not going to play it. Sure. <laughs> Sheena doesn't have that. Right. She's like, oh, yeah. Sure. Hold yeah, on. no problem. Yeah. So she'll just pull something up she's never heard in her life. Jeez. And she'll just make up the lyrics. Or not the lyrics. She'll pull up the lyrics, but she'll just make up the 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 melodies and stuff. And she's got no fear about it. She's like, well, whatever. You want to hear this song? I'll sing this song for you, even though I've never heard it. <sighs> and she'll just play something that doesn't even sound <laughs> <Sure>. anything. <laughs> Like the real song, and right. she, by the time she's done, you're like, God, that was the best arrangement of that song I ever heard in my life. And Chris Foster's just the same way. He's like, Who cares if it doesn't make sense? Yeah. Who cares if it's not the right melody? You're still like, making music. Like, how do you bottle that and then give it to me? Uh, man, I'm I'm working on it. That's why I'm hanging out with Chris Foster so much. That's a good idea, bro. He's he's my favorite director I've worked with. I'm I am the best when I'm working with him. I am the best when I'm working with. Isn't him. Isn't that crazy that he does that? Yeah, and he's. Yeah, he. I don't think he understands how much. No. Uh, uh, by a lot, I no. think. I think he's. I think it's completely off his radar. Yeah, t- I agree. To a detriment, almost like. You know, I, I'm like, I wish. I wish you could see my perspective, man. Yeah. I wish I could take my eyeballs out, and just put them in your head, you know, and for you to see what I get. I feel the same about you. Sw- oh, well, stop it. <laughs> Walked right into it, you boob. <laughs> you, you boob. Can we bring that back? I th- I never stopped. <laughs> I, I use it all the time. I'm gonna, uh, Scamp is my big one. Scamp is a good one. Scamp. I've like, always liked calling people boobs. It's my you, favorite. You boob. You boob. <laughs> That's pretty good. I need to bring that out. Too. I do it all the time. Yeah, hanging out, hanging out with Foster, man. I, that's what I'm excited about going on this tour. He's going to film a documentary about the tour because right. it's not just it's not just a tour playing music, but we're also going. I'm going with this cat, Chris Bepko. Sure, phenomenal musician, cool, phenomenal singer, phenomenal songwriter, and we're going to travel the country. There's at least a big circle through the middle of the country, mm-hmm. and while we're touring the package, we're also writing. A six-track acoustic EP, cool, and recording it in hotel rooms, dude, on the tour. So at the end of the tour, we have in three an weeks acoustic EP. Yeah, in three weeks, it's amazing. I love that. And as if that's not crazy enough, yeah, <laughs> there's Chris Foster who's making a documentary about it about two crazy kids, independent artists, independent musicians, doing the damn thing who are. B- put the show together themselves booking the tour themselves there's no agents are involved right or anything of that nature we don't have managers and all that stuff it's us yeah. putting everything together and hopefully executing it all while also doing something stupid like saying yes. hey at the end of this there's gonna be a six track acoustic ep i and, love you it. know um that comes from it and so foster's do making a documentary of it and i'm like all, all i can Every time I talk about it, all I can hear in my head is I get to hang out with Chris Foster in an RV right? for three weeks. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, That's rewarding in and of itself. Right? We're not going to get anything filmed. No. Because I'm going to be like, well, tell me about this. Or it'll be the other way. He'll film everything. This yes. is Chris. Well, yeah. So anytime he's near me, he's like, can I set up a camera? Yeah. Like, we had lunch the other day. He's like, bring your recording equipment. I was like, why? <laughs> he's like, I don't know. We'll just see what happens. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and by the end, he had me sad. <laughs> he's like, let's talk about this. And I was like, 
okay, I mean, I just woke up, so I'm going to be a little more vulnerable than I should. And right. He's like, why do you feel that way? I go, I don't, I don't know. Why do I feel that way? Yeah, he's like a director turned therapist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He yeah. likes that stuff. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, he likes telling the story of true human nature, which he I, does. I appreciate. I appreciate raw, organic. I just I was in the recording studio yesterday recording my new single called Smoke and Roaches. Love it. And I I listened to the playback of a couple of the guitar parts, and I was like, oh, man, they could. Mm-hmm. It's a little sloppy there. And he's like, let's retrack it. Yeah, the producer for it, and, sure, and the engineer. His name's Tyler Klusner, and um, I was like, you know what? Leave them in, because it's like raw and real and yeah. organic, and I could make it more perfect. But then I'm, then I'm doing what all of these pop kids are doing, sure, it's overproducing something and and making it perfect, making it a banger before they can put it out. Mm-hmm. And I look back at Sheena's advice. Just put it out. Who cares if people like it or not? Just yeah. put it out. Because you're going to learn something from it. And the sure. next one's going to be better. You know, every song I wrote for this album, the stuff that I've written after it mm-hmm. is way better than the stuff for the album. Makes sense. You know, and that's I'm like, well, how, that's how it works. <laughs> half of me doesn't want to record the album anymore. Because sure. I'm like, I want to record this other music, but the other music doesn't make sense. Until right. I put this album out, it's, uh, it's called Mighty Fine, and it's just telling my like story it. of the last four years, five cool. years. Sure. Um, just telling, telling my story, you know, and I'm like, I need to get that story out. Yeah. But same thing with my acoustic EP that's out on Spotify. You listen Which to that. Which is great. I listen to it all the time. Oh, I appreciate it. It's great. That. It also has 26,000 downloads. Yeah, it does. No, it doesn't. Half it of those like are me. 64. <laughs> half, um, of, half of those are me. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> I still get paid royalties on them. So you, Good. I'll keep I it just, up. I'll keep it up. I just put it on loop. Smart. And, and let Smart it run man. on my Alexa all day. Smart man. Yeah, dude. When I check my royalties balance, I had $2.57 get in there it. the other day. Yeah, baby. That's half of my coffee you made. Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like... Uh, it's like, what is that thing? It's like, you know, finish not perfect is the goal. If yeah, you can that's finish on, it. That's on my computer. Is, is done, I have a really hard time with that. Done is better than perfect. Yeah. And You're working on it? And that's, dude, This that's what this year has been for me is like, just get it done. Just put it out. Yeah. Take Sheena's approach. Take Foster's approach. Just put it out. And I'm already excited about the record that's coming after this new record. Yeah. Just because I, I know some of the songs that are going to be on it now. Cool. And, you know, songs that I, I just wrote the song called Bad Girl. Like it. It's about this chick I met at the bar the other night. <laughs> she was bad girl, man. And, uh, you know, piercing blue eyes. And she was just throwing it out all night <laughs> to me and to every guy that walked near her. And my wife and her college roommate were there. And they even made mention. They were like, this girl is... She's trying to close it down, sure. man. <laughs> and they saw her just repeatedly flirting with me, you know, and I didn't realize I'm not I don't want to say she was crazy. That sure. But I didn't but realize that's what you mean. the extent she of She was determined. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize the extent of her personality at first. So I'm like singing her tendency with I'm like this is for my new friend, insert name here. Yeah. <laughs> and Little did like, you know. Yeah, and then I played her Tennessee Whiskey, and she was like... I, listen, I feel that way after you bro, sing Tennessee she Whiskey. Was, <laughs> she was googly-eyed. And, you know, I, I I go out in the parking lot. I'm trying to load my, my vehicle up, and she came out, and she's talking about this and that. And she's like, oh, let me see your tattoo. And I'm showing her my, t- my hand and she's like rubbing my tattoo, like rubbing my hand and my arm and stuff. Oh boy. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> and then she just grabs me and kisses me. And I was like, oh, this is bad news because she could totally get it. <laughs> like, like, you know, in real life. Sure. If I was, yeah. Uh, sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And so I woke up the next morning still thinking about her. And you're like, I got a song idea. <laughs> yeah. And, and so I wrote this song about her and, and uh, the chorus goes, uh, straight to my heart and my soul, then blue eyes, baby, I lose control. You're driving me insane. I'd walk away if I could, but a bad girl can be so good. And You know, and you're not wrong. The song slaps. It's a really yeah. great song, dude. <laughs> 
but I'm like, I can't put this on my on this record that's like mostly about how great my wife is and yeah good point she's stuck by me through so much crap and then the very first song on there is yeah. like yeah but i may cheat on you with this broad i met it yeah the probably not pro- mixed signals and not the broad, best i don't mean that in a negative see this is why i can't be mayor somebody's <laughs> gonna pull up this podcast and be like he called women broads right. <laughs> and i don't i don't that's this, this i need to take that out of my vernacular i know that this reminds me i need to have sheen on you definitely. I don't know how that Sheena hasn't on. happened before. We got to make it up. Yeah, you for sure need to have Sheena on. You want to put in a good word for me? <laughs> oh, dude, she would do it in a heartbeat. I know. I'll just call yeah. her. Be like, hey, listen. Yeah, she would do it in a heartbeat, man. That's right. She's gonna be recording on my album. Good. Um, she's. We're doing a duet on the album, and um, a song that we co-wrote together. Hell yeah! And uh, she's doing all my background vocals. That's gonna be incredible. So I will for sure see her in two weeks' time. If not before, but uh, Perfect. I will, of course, put in a good word for it. That's right. I can't imagine that she would say no to this. Right. Right. No, she's the best. But oh, I, she is. So having, like you said, on this side of life, do you have any advice for up and coming artists or musicians or anything like hard lessons learned? That you're like, I'm going to pass this one down. My my biggest advice for anyone is practice your fucking instrument. Yeah. You know, it's that easy by instrument. I mean, whatever it is. Sure. If you're an accountant, man, every, while you're driving, mm-hmm. start adding phone numbers together. You know what I mean? Sure. Get good at it. If you're an actor, you know, fly to Colorado, find some chump with yeah. a camera <laughs> and try just do it, man. Sure. It's like work on this stuff. Read books, um, learn the craft. Yeah, man. Because, you know, you, you flip to now and people are going, you know, oh, you're such a great guitar player. And I'm like, I'm really not just been doing it for 20 some years sure Wait, what is that math so i started playing guitar in 98 98 that's 20 yeah 22 22 Eight, years 98 so, 2008 18 19 20 21 23 23 years so i'm like it's not that i'm good it's just that i've been playing for 23 sure. years so it sounds like I'm. you've good. earned it right yeah you know so i'm like the, the reality is, is if you want to be good at x mm-hmm. you have to work at being good to x or good at x because if you want to get to the point where people are like, man, that's really crazy. That that's a great thing you did. Mm -hmm. You got to acknowledge that there's decades of practice behind that. Sure. And so my a number one for everybody is always practice, practice your craft, try to uh, try to get better. You know what I mean? Like, you know, learn from your lessons. Um, Second thing I would say is everybody knows everybody. Yeah. So learning that one, don't get in the trap of I can help you because I know this guy. Right. Like if you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to know that guy, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? A lot of people give up a lot of. Um, like their personal agency. Yeah. yeah. And they, they they yield a lot to people with a silver tongue. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's one thing that I'm always grateful for with all of the bands that I've been. I remember with Fellow Bliss, man, when when we got offered recording contracts and we turned them down because the contracts weren't good. Sure. And all the kids in this town who played music were furious. Sure. And they were like, why? You have a chance to get out. You have a chance at this dream. Why would you say no? And I was just like. It's just I read some those silver tongue dude. <laughs> yeah, and like I, I would rather keep doing what I'm doing and have it pay off and you know in time. Yes. Than just try to get, you know, it's what I it's the hang up I have with shows like The Voice, mm-hmm. um, American Idol, you know, X Factor. Sure, anything like that. America's Got Talent. All of these things is it's like such a ten- and I think. If and when you have Sheen on the show, she'll probably talk about it because she was on the she voice. She was on the voice, yeah. And um, while it was beneficial to her career, sure, um, it's definitely you you recognize quickly how much it's. I don't want to say they manipulate things, sure, but everyone is definitely very guided, mm-hmm. and a lot of times you're not seeing a very authentic version of these people sure which is what you're supposed they sell it as right let's pull back the curtains but like even down to the way they're dressed like you know um 
There's so much window dressing. There is, man. Yeah. I, I, I know too, I have too many friends who have been on those shows, mm -hmm. you know, and I got one guy who was like, I, I could, they wouldn't let me to progress on the show because they wanted me to dress a certain way mm. and I didn't want to do it. And sure. I All advertising. The show. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, well, wait a minute. I thought this was supposed to be about the voice. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, you know, which is no slam on the voice either. I think it's got its place. Sure. Um, certainly from an art, uh, entertainment standpoint. Absolutely. I, you know, it's just very one-sided. Right. You know what I mean? Like people can name maybe three people mm -hmm. from American Idol. Sure. That actually made it. Mm -hmm. The rest of them are like, who? Right. Who is that guy? Right. You know what I mean? Like, that was the second runner up or that person won. Mm -hmm. You know, like, well, what did they do after that? Ruben Stutter? Right, yeah. <laughs> When's the last time you heard from Ruben Stutter? Good point. He put out one single. I, this is my Sorry for 2004. Yeah. <laughs> which never date music anyway because yeah. you can't listen to that song past 2004. That's a good point. You know what I mean? That's a good point. And Another piece of good advice. <laughs> and that was it. Like, we're, you know, Clay Aiken, where is that kid? You know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's a temporary success. So right. So I, I say all that to say, if you're if you're where you're supposed to be, mm -hmm. you're going to end up in the right spot. Yeah, I agree. But sometimes it's like you, mm -hmm. right? You will end up on Star Wars. Absolutely. It may take another 10 years, mm -hmm. but you'll get there. And once you get there, how beautiful is that moment going to be? I could just quit everything. Because it's like, yeah, dude, I put 20 years you know, into, yeah. into this. Yeah. Like, talk about celebrating your wins. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's a big time win that came through all your the failures biggest. and all your rejections. Yeah. Led you to, you know, this ultimate place where sure. you're going. And so if if you have a dream that is in line particularly with, with what you're good at, mm -hmm. just stay the course, man. Yeah. The, Don't give up. The best bands that I've ever heard are bands that have been around forever. Yeah. I remember Seven Dust is one of my all time favorite bands. And I remember going to see them when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we snuck down to Atlanta, Georgia from Columbia, South Carolina to watch this band awesome. play. They're still around, still making music. They, they're just about to release another new record. Hell yeah. You know, and I'm like, God, how, where do you guys even come up with this? And pr it's same lineup, original lineup. It sure. changed for a little while, um, several years back, but it's back to the original lineup now. And, uh, you know they're doing doing their doing their thing, man, and and that only came from them sticking out, you yeah, know, and 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 staying the course. So stay the course and practice, 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 practice. I love it. I love that a musician. That's the advice. Practice. Yeah, there's dude. so much wisdom in such a tiny word. You can look as great as you want, but if you can't blow, then who cares? Yeah, it's true. You know what I mean? It's and, true. Um, even if you're just a singer, man, not to say just a singer. Sure. A singer is a very important role. Yeah. And has its own set of. Absolutely. Of skills that are, mm -hmm. that must be honed. Yep. Um, but learn an instrument, man, or at least learn the language. Right. You know, because that's, that's a big thing that you run into in this industry is you have a singer who doesn't know anything about music and they're trying to sure. direct a band about melodies and stuff, you know, be, be able to communicate with the people that you're know your craft fully yeah it's like if you're an actor that can only do drama or only yeah. comedy it's like well what if you have a bunch of different roles you need to understand yeah the absolutely all-encompassing thing of the art yeah music if you're a singer who doesn't understand yeah. music you're gonna have a much harder time than one that does yeah so lear know lear your craft learn your craft learn learn all of the roles of your craft learn the get in the business side of it because yeah i think that that's ultimately what i'm getting at with it you know when i'm talking about the silver tongue people and sure the get rich quick, you know, or get exposure quick uh -huh. through uh -huh. these programs, these TV programs and stuff. If you know the business yourself, then, you know, if your goal is to do what you love to do and provide for your family, mm -hmm. that's way more feasible than mm -hmm. getting famous. Absolutely. You know, if you're in it just for the fame, then I have no, advice for you yeah. other than sell out as quickly play as you the can. lottery <laughs> yeah just say yes yeah say yes to everything you'll be famous you're also gonna hate yourself <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna end up britney spears yeah but um you know uh but if you know if you're serious about 
putting food on your table and doing what you love, then man, learn the business. Learn, yeah. Learn, learn all aspects of it. Cause it's way more obtainable than people think that it is. Sure. But you only get there through practice and digging in and make friends, it. make friends. Not Very enemies. important. Don't stay be a dick. Humble. <laughs> yeah. Stay humble. Make friends everywhere you go. My, my network is a culmination of so many years of just being friends with people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like my network is nothing but my friends. Sure. You know, they're, they're all people that I genuinely love and genuinely love me. And the more people you have in your corner like that, the better off you're going to be. Totally. Totally. Yeah. I agree. And just like that, we've been talking for two hours and 23 minutes. <laughs> Not the longest, but the longest overdue for sure. What was, was who's the longest? I think, uh, over three hours. What? Yeah, with details. I think his first one or second one. He definitely wasn't using these chairs. No. Because <laughs> these things sit like a rock. Yeah. I am so wildly uncomfortable right now. That's it's right. Out of control. We did it, though. We did. You they, finally came on. It is was long overdue. Five and, and a half uh, years I've been doing this, and you were always top of the list. Uh, but you were also elusive. You ran away to Colorado to yeah, avoid this. I did. <laughs> that was the sole reason, in fact. That's right. That's what I heard. That's what and I heard. Uh, I'm glad I got it on I record. I came back for the coffee maker. That's right. I understand. It was very good. It was a great coffee, right? But we did it. We did it. Thank you. No, thank you. I love you. I love you. Where can people find your stuff? Oh, on I know, right? Crap like that. <laughs> on the internet. Yeah, on the internet. Is it all on your website? Because you have so many different avenues. Are you going in on the Slimtronic 5000? Yeah, you can get to pretty much anything that's okay. related to me through that website. Cool. Or Slimtronic5k.com. They there both you go. take you to the same spot. Perfect. Um, I just realized early on that while the name is Slimtronic 5000 with the number 5000, uh-huh. um, a, it's ugly to look at. Yeah, and <laughs> it's a lot of zeros. B, I was trying to make my my Twitter handle as short as possible. Smart. So Smart. I just shrunk it down to five k, and that's kind of just the brand I've been using now. All right. Uh, for the last couple of years, it's just branded as Slimtronic five k. So the proper website is Slimtronic five thousand dot com. But you, if you type in Slimtronic five k, which happens to be all of my social media handles, smart man, get that you, SEO. Yeah. Then. Um, you know, if you go to slimtronic5k.com, it'll take you to the same spot. Sweet. That's where yeah. you'll find the music, everything. It's music. All my music is uh, free downloads on the website. Um, I'm not saying don't ever spend your money at Amazon or iTunes or any of those places, but sure. don't buy my records. Don't buy my music because mm -hmm. you can stream it on all streaming platforms and you can download it for absolutely. I don't sell my music. You can sure. download it for free right off my website. So. Music's there. There's some videos there. All my live dates are there. There's a ton of merch uh, that's on there. Um, you can learn about my other projects and, um, you know, learn about whatever else I got going on. It's all on the site. I love it. I love it. And keep an eye out for the tour later this year if anyone's in a city that you're coming to. Fingers crossed. You know, if it happens, Fingers you got to check it out. Yeah. But I love it. I love it. You're the best. You are. Stop it. And... <laughs> Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at BrianBalance.com. There you'll find all my demos and a bunch of other fun stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch! Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. Also, I've got a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Xavier, and Victor. Your support means so, so much, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well. <laughs>